the sideline. Coaches screaming, waving their arms. A direct snap. Now they give it back to Stubbs, who's going to throw it. Has a man wide open. Trickeration from the Flames pays off. That's the Phil. Another Philly special on this day. Liberty Football's 45th annual homecoming game. Welcome inside the gates of Williams Stadium. Today, the Liberty Flames taking on the Idaho State Bengals. Rhett McGibbon here alongside Pat Kelly, Matt Camary, and DJ Jordan. And guys, we thought the Flames were going to get two wins in a row, a feat that they have yet to do this season back in New Mexico. They didn't do that. Today, they have an opportunity to, but what do they need to do to prevent an emotional letdown against a very good Bengals offense? Well, Red, just like you said, this Bengals offense is really good. The defense has to come out and sustain what they did last week against Troy. Had a great game against Troy last week after giving up multiple 500-yard games. They have to come out, set the tone early, and continue that pace. Really, on the flip side, the offense just needs to do what they've been doing all year long, put up big yards, put up big points, continue to perform how they have performed. Great game plan by Joe Daly week in and week out. If they can do that and the defense can play with some semblance of similarity to last week against Troy, I think they can have a good day today. Time to take a look now at our impact players and hand-picked here by Matt Kamari. You're not going with Tanner Guller, the guy that threw eight touchdowns a couple weeks ago. You're going with his primary target and brother, Mitch. Primary target is an understatement. This guy is 31 receptions, 760 yards. He's a big receiver at 6'3", 220. Big, big downfield threat. Has multiple catches over 60 yards this season from his brother. Big deep threat, so the, the back end of the Liberty defense has got to sustain and keep up with him while also keeping their eyes on the run because that's exactly what the Idaho State can do as well. They can run the ball. This offense is very, very, very balanced. balanced. And you got James Madison, who is their starting running back, averaging five yards a carry. That's 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 a lot of yards per carry. Yeah, Flanagan, a dangerous weapon on the ground as well. And that leads to you, Pat. The defensive line's going to have to be key, and you want to look even more to their leader, Juwan Wells. Had a good week last week, needs even more today. We look to their leader, Juwan Wells, who a guy that Coach Wimberly, who has compared in the past to Khalil Mack, who he did coach at Buffalo. He's a guy that they're going to look to today. He needs to be stout up front to help stop that run, to help get some sacks, or to put some pressure on the quarterback. Juwan Wells is going to be a guy that we want to look for today. He could really impact this game. He was big last week, DJ. The rest of the Flames defense was big last week. Although coming into that game, there's a lot of scrutiny around this group. What changed last week? Well, I don't know. There's a lot of scrutiny for good reason because you had three straight games where they allowed over 40 points. But if you're Liberty University, you've seen them have big wins before. You've also seen them have big disappointments right after that. If you go back to the 2015 season, uh, after James and Madison playoff victory, they had a season where they went 6-5 and five, in large part because of defensive disappointments. If you go back to last year after Baylor, you still had a lot of disappointments, especially against Monmouth where you gave up 56 points uh, and against other schools where you have 40 points. So uh, it's really important for Jawan Wells, you've already named, and Jesse Lemonier to have a really, really big game today. It's homecoming. You can feel it and hear it in the background. The emotions are high. Matt Warner, Joe Yock with a call when we come back. Carter Bank and Trust has supported Liberty University for over three decades. When many were skeptical of Liberty's vision, our founder, Worth Harris Carter Jr., understood the vision and saw its potential. His instincts were correct. Liberty University has become a regional economic engine. We continue Mr. Carter's legacy by working with determined visionaries to transform potentials into realities every day. As with Liberty University, Carter Bank & Trust is proud of the past, focused on the future. For more than 120 years, we've been there. In churches and schools, camps and senior living centers. We've been there in times of joy and in the most difficult moments, in times of loss. And our success has been measured not by the bottom line, but by our unwavering commitment to protecting our customers so they can continue their important work. Church Mutual Insurance Company, protecting the greater good.
I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. It's homecoming 2018 here in Lynchburg, Virginia, as today the Liberty Flames play host to Idaho State out of the Big Sky Conference. And with that, we welcome you into Williams Stadium alongside former North Carolina and CFL wide receiver Joe Young. I'm Matt Warner. And Joe, huge win for Liberty last week. They beat a 5-1 Troy squad, one of the more impressive wins in Liberty's history. But right after that game ended, moments after it finished, head coach Turner Gill said, this can't be a one-time thing. We have to bring this level of effort every single week. They get that opportunity today against an Idaho State squad that's been playing awfully well. Yeah, Liberty throughout the throughout the years has had some big time wins against some big time programs, but they've also had some head scratching losses also. And this is an Idaho State football team that's coming in here expecting to win today. This should be a fantastic game today. Idaho State squad one that can certainly put up some points. Liberty's offense will get the ball first, however, as. The Bengals won the toss but deferred until the second half. So Liberty with their kickoff return unit on. Ball is in the air and we are underway on a beautiful day in Lynchburg, Virginia. That's Seneca Espinosa taking the kickoff, getting out to about the 23 before he's whacked down. So that's where the Flames offense will take over and that's where this offense led by Buckshot Calvert starts things. Calvert record-setting quarterback in his junior season for Liberty. Young man with 58 career touchdown passes, ninth in the nation in yards per game. He's averaging about 315 passing yards per game, so he comes out. Also of note, Antonio Gandy-Golden on the field as well. This was a guy a week ago who missed the ball game, we were told, because of mono. And yet he's out there today, so we'll try to get more information on that as this ball game progresses. But good to see the Flames' most explosive receiver back in this ball game. Frankie Hickson in the backfield. They play action to him, swinging out wide. DJ Stubbs, stiff arm, gets up to the 29-yard line as we take a look at this Liberty offense, which has been explosive this year, averaging just over 31 points per ball game. Yeah, Liberty really looks strong offensively. I really like that opening play right there where they changed it and ran the wide, wide receiver screen to the outside. There's a connection to Antonio Gandy-Golden. This is a guy who has made some big plays throughout his career. As we take a look at the defense trying to slow him down, Idaho State, you get a look at their starting defensive unit. They'll play usually three down linemen, a little bit of an odd front as that's what the Flames will be looking at today. Flames swinging out wide to B.J. Farrow on the far side. And this Flames offense looks to be in rhythm right out of the gate. Yeah, they're starting out with three plays, Matt, all to the, all to the outside towards the sidelines. Uh, of the field and uh, they've seen something there early always like to see what Joe Daly's thought process is he wants to attack the edges towards the sidelines early and they're having some success second and one again they show the run now swing it out wide to Stubbs and again having success to the outside they move the chains and a methodical drive thus far from Liberty yeah that's four plays in a row of attacking the outside and the thing about it, it's a good, clean play, Matt. It's not a difficult play. It's a good, clean play straight to the outside. The space is there, and as the old saying goes, take what they give you, and they are doing that right now. Frankie Hickson takes the first carry of the ball game, trying to get wide. Now met and dropped right around the line of scrimmage. Cody Graves, the leading tackler for the Bengals, meets him and gets him to the ground. Graves had 13 tackles a week ago against UC Davis. I'll tell you, Matt, Cody could have played that any better. Able to be patient, wait, wait, let Frankie make his move as he bounces to the outside, scrapes over the top, and lays a stick on him. So second down, Calvert looking. Nasa changes his view there as he swings it wide. Hickson making the catch out of the backfield, and he's close to another Flames first down. In fact, it appears he'll have it. Flames don't throw to the running back out of the backfield a lot, but they've got some guys who are athletic enough to make plays if you're able to find them. Yeah, sure. I like right there is Buckshot. That wasn't his read at all, but Buckshot uh, was able to sort of work his way outside of the pocket, pocket and keep his eyes down the field and be able to find Frankie Hickson. So first down now on the Idaho State 36. Three wide receivers set. Flames looking to the sideline. Now changing the play. 
Flames like to play with tempo, but last week we saw them against Troy really slow it down and have some success doing so. Play clock at three. Calvert again, Gandy Golden. Quickly met, wrapped up as Anthony Ricks there on the coverage. Yeah, really good to see AGG out here again this week. Had a sort of a mysterious thing happen to him last week with the sickness, and but didn't think he's going to be back. But to see him back in the lineup is great. So second and four now for Liberty. Buckshot rolling to his right, low pass. And it's caught by Mitchell Lewis, the fullback, but for a loss. Lewis had a catch, his first catch in his career a week ago against Troy that went for 14 yards. They try to get the fullback involved here, and he makes the grab, just didn't pick up any yardage. Yeah, Buckshot needs to get that ball up, put it on him. They had to play blocked well to the outside where Mitchell, if he would have put it on the, in between the numbers, could have cut it upfield for a first down. So third and five now for Liberty. Four wide receivers. Calvert stands in there, throws a little behind his receiver, but what a grab. That's Caleb Coleman, the freshman. That pass behind him, able to reach back and snag it. Unbelievable catch by Caleb Coleman because Kobe Lowe, the cornerback, broke, saw that wow. the slam play was, Kobe Lowe saw that the slam play was on, and he broke on that ball hard, and a great play by Coleman. Calvert has completed his first eight passes. Completely different from what we saw a week ago where he really struggled early against Troy. Throwing it down the field, looking for Gandy Golden, but I take that back. That was Lionel McConnell making the catch, but unable to get a foot down, and there's your first incomplete pass of the ball game, although we have a flag down. Yeah, Liberty has found a decent rhythm right now. They Mixing it up, to taking the sidelines, using that very well, hitting a slant play, that play a little bit out of bounds. Now, what gets you behind the chains, as we all know, matter penalties. These are the things when you start getting in the red zone, you can't have the holding calls, etc. that gets you behind the chains. So first and 20 now for Liberty, as that backs them up a little bit. They give the ball, Hickson. Probing the defense, lowers the shoulder and picks up a couple. You know, I know we both really like how Frankie Hickson runs the ball. He shows good patience, even though he's only able to pick up a couple yards. He's trying to set things up. You can see with the vision and the patience of himself. And then when he makes a decision, he gets his shoulder square, gets upfield, and does a good job of trying to finish runs. Hickson had 71 yards on the ground against Troy a week ago, and they really made an effort to establish the run in that ball game. Much different than what we're seeing here today where they've come out slinging it. Second and 18 now for Liberty. They give it to Hickson again. A little more success running it this time as he gets it down to the 20-yard line and sets up third and manageable. Yeah, it looks like you get a third and nine right here, but you're in a first and 20. You have two runs, throwing the ball. It's Joe Daly's trying to mix it up. He's following, following his call sheet right now, so let's see if they're able to convert this third down. Maya Moala on the stop a moment ago brings up third and nine. Gandy Golden to the near side has been Buckshot Calvert's favorite target really ever since the two showed up on campus. Let's keep an eye on him here on this big third down opportunity. Calvert stepping up in the pocket, slinging it wide. Good catch once again. Caleb Coleman showing you some nice hands with a couple tough snags here early on, and that will bring up fourth and short. Yeah, this is going to be first decision time for Liberty. It looks like they've already made their decision, and they're going for it. It's fourth and a good yard and a half, I think. They go quickly. They hand off up the middle, and they'll have the first down. And Frankie Hickson able to... Find a little bit of running room, and the Flames move the chains once again. Yeah, I really like that, Matt. If you're able to make a decision on fourth down, do it quick. Give it right back to him. Tripped up initially, able to fall forward down to about the five. Well, the Flames haven't kicked many field goals this year. It's two for three. Their kicker, Aaron Peart. So they haven't run them out there a whole lot in that situation. Fourth and short, Turner Gill likes the matchup. And really, you, you want to send a message to your team early on too, don't you, that you have confidence in them. Yeah, you're, you're sending a statement that you're going to be able to try to run the football. Fourth and a yard and a half is a long ways to go on a fourth down in the first drive. So to make the decision quickly and then execute it is outstanding. Hickson still in there in the backfield. They give it to him, running to his left, looking for a hole, none developing. Now bouncing it outside, had some room, dive for the pylon, and he's in! Touchdown. Peyton 
patient running from Frankie Hickson pays off as the Flames strike first. That is what's seen. The replay on this play, what you'll see right here is the Liberty offensive line, the way that they do the zone reach block, they're just trying to stay on the man. You don't have to pancake men, you don't have to, to, to turn them over. All you have to do is stay on your block. And like you said, Frankie, Frankie Hickson shows that patience. He's able to have a nose for the goal line. Great play, great patience, great blocking up front by the offensive line. Now Alex Probert in for the extra point. He was the Flames starting kicker the last two seasons. Has been injured all year up until that point. So good sign to get him back uh, active and out there as well as he boots it through. And the Flames take a 7-0 lead. That's how you draw it up right there. Outside passes. Outside pass is able to make first downs, run the ball right up the middle, right up the gut, and then hit him with a stretch play uh, to the outside on a, on a five-yard run for a touchdown. Couldn't have got off to a better start. That's a telltale, telltale sign right now for Liberty. Well, because of that holding penalty, wiped out the incompletion, Buckshot Calvert finishes that drive nine for nine for 61 yards. So wow. he comes out dialed in here today, as that's the exact kind of start Turner Gill was hoping for. For a team where, listen, and it tells you kind of where Liberty's been the last number of years. They get a huge victory a week ago, and what are all the fans saying? Boy, yeah. what you think could be a letdown? Well, that's that's how you want to come out when there's that talk of a letdown following an emotional win. Yeah, the offense has, the offense has done their job to start the game. It'll be interesting to see if the defense can do their job because this Idaho State offense, when you watch them on film, they are explosive and they can score points and score points in bunches. They're going to get an opportunity now as Aaron Piert in to kick it away. That kick will sail into the end zone, and they'll take a knee right there as Idaho State will get it at the 25. Well, there's a look at the starting quarterback, Tanner Guller. Red shirt senior. Four touchdown passes away from the program record. And boy, as he had quite the season, including eight touchdown passes a few weeks ago against Idaho. It's a lot of touchdowns. That's a lot. My arm feels sore just talking <laughs> about it. This is a team, as you said at the outset, Joe, can score quickly. They have a lot of weapons. Not just passing the ball, but running it as well. They begin on the ground, handoff up the middle. That's James Madison on the carry, and not much doing. As we take a look at that Bengal offense, you'll see two goalers there. Mitch, number two, the older brother of Tanner. Big play wide receiver, actually a former pro baseball player, drafted in the first round by the Phillies. Uh, played pro ball for about three or four years. Once he was done with that, came back here with his little bro and uh, has turned into quite the combination throwing the football. Goaler swings it out of the backfield. Madison makes a man miss, has some room to run, and is able to pick up the first down. So the Flames miss a tackle there. As you take a look at their defense, Jawan Wells, Jesse Lemonnier, the two end rushers that are so dangerous and really played awfully well a week ago against Troy. And off up the middle, room to run. Madison lowering the shoulder, and they may have another first down. Yeah, you, you watch James Madison on film, Matt, and he really is a hard, hard running back to bring down. You saw that on that first screen play where he was able to get out into the flat and make a tackle and miss and get a first down. They give it to him again. Again, good cut right at the line of scrimmage, and he picks up about seven. So as the Flames offensively had it rolling through the air, you see Idaho State having success on the ground here early. Yeah, no question. Uh, they know where their bread and butter is, and that is in James Madison and, and the two, out, two outside wide receivers and, and one outstanding quarterback. So second now in six. Guller looking downfield, taking a shot, looking for Dean. It's underthrown and picked off. Corbin Jackson was there. And a big momentum play for this Flames defense as they were able to force the turnover. The Flames forced three turnovers last week against Troy. They get one here early on a bit of an underthrown ball. Corbin Jackson in the Flames looking sharp early. Experience a blend of refined craftsmanship and raw power. Engineered to take the crown. The Lexus LS500 and LS500H. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. 
7-0, Liberty on top, and they get the ball back here after the turnover. Take a look at Liberty's head coach, Turner Gill, in his seventh season here at Liberty. Yeah, has really helped lead this program. Now into the FBS era for the Flames. And on the other side for Idaho State in his second season, Rob Finnessy replaced Mike Kramer prior to last season and has this program heading in the right direction. He's led this team. This program has played a number of F FBS games, and he talked this week about the atmosphere here in that student group right behind his bench. He's well aware of it as our own Bobby Bullock checks in now. And, and Bobby, he, he knows those guys are going to be on his team all day long. And that's right. One of the biggest statements at Jose's State's coaching staff did was about this section right here. He says, we know this is one of the loudest stadiums, but when you have your student section right behind the bench, it makes it for a tough atmosphere to get yourself into. He said, but this is what college football is all about. We're missing a big play, Matt. You better look at it. Yeah, that, that student section's getting fired up right now as DJ Stubbs takes the reception and quickly Liberty moves into Bengal territory. Yeah, that's what you want to do, Matt. You want to get your playmakers the ball in space. Hit DJ on a quick slant. He broke it for a long gain. Calvert now trying to set the wide receiver screen. It's broken tackle there as Antonio Gandy Golden able to pick up a couple as Buckshot still has not thrown an incomplete pass. It's amazing with AGG, Matt, how he's two yards behind the line of scrimmage with two defenders on him. You think he's going to get tackled for a three-yard loss, and he ends up gaining a couple yards with his, his size. He's so hard to bring down. Yeah, 6'4", 220. Andy Golden, a uh, big target, to say the least, and an athletic guy for his size as well. Second and seven, Peyton Pickett in the backfield now for the Flames. You'll see both he and Frankie Hickson back there today. Play action to him. Now Calvert rolling to his right, has time. Slings it towards the sideline, and that one deflected and knocked out of bounds as Kobe Lowe there on the coverage. Yeah, sometimes for Buckshot, you got to take the first read that comes to you. Had the quick out route that was right there, but had been able to deliver the ball, turn up field for eight or nine yards. He got a little bit greedy and came, waited for the comeback, and the comeback was covered right there. So it'll be third and seven as Liberty makes a little substitution there. Fidelo Bafin coming into the ball game. The tight end had a couple of big catches a week ago for Liberty. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they use a Bathan in the offense this, this week after his big plays. Calvert looking for Gandy Golden, finds him. Looks like he's going to be right around the marker, and we'll see where they spot him. Gandy Golden just so big, you feel like you have him covered, but he almost can box you out a little bit like a power forward. Yeah, yeah, and makes exactly. the catch, and it's good for a Flames first down. Yeah, it's a good analogy. That's exactly what he did right there. He basically boxed him out, was able to uh, deliver the ball and, and make, a, make a first down for the Flames. Buck shot, play action. Now looking downfield, throwing it up. Up for grabs and a little bit over the head of Caleb Coleman as he was trying to chase it down. All right, let's get to the keys to the game first for these Liberty Flames. Joe, how do you see this one? breaking down. Yeah, I think offensively for Liberty, they need to control the line of scrimmage, run the football. That's really going to open up their passing game. And then on defense, the way that Idaho State's going to stay in this game is through explosive play. So Liberty defensively, just like they did in the inter interception right there, is to minimize the explosive plays. Second and 10 now for the Liberty offense. They pitch it wide to pick it. Oh boy, that is well played. Hit and dropped there is nice defense by Joe Martin coming up to make the tackle as we take a look now to the keys to the game for Idaho State yeah for Idaho, for Idaho State offensively they do love to throw the 50-50 ball and they do a good job of bringing it down they need to win that battle and then defensively if they want to stay in this they have to create three to four turnovers uh, to give themselves a chance and then maybe make some explosive plays on the defensive side of the ball so third and 13 now for Liberty. Idaho State brings four. Buckshot climbing the pocket, throws it. Oh, boy. Just over the top of the DB, Anthony Ricks, and Gandy Golden unable to grab it. Ricks was undercutting that thing. I don't know that he got a hand on it, but did just enough to distract Gandy Golden. And now the Flames look like they're going to bring the punting unit on. Really, really impressive job of the Idaho State Bengal defense of, of applying pressure to Buckshot right there, making him step up in the pocket. You could look by watching his feet, you could tell that he felt a little bit uncomfortable and he tried to deliver the ball to a place where he really didn't want to go with it. So Wade and Alvis comes in to punt it away. End over end punt. Land on the 11, takes a flames, hop down inside the five and they'll down it at the one. 
Well, you can't do it any better than that. Benjamin Alexander there to down it. And Idaho State is backed up in the shadow of their own goal line. When we return, Liberty leading 7-0. We were designed to be creative. We were meant to seek the truth, to explore the world around us. Challenges, we embrace them. Compromise, never. We are a community dedicated to championing the gospel. We are champions for Christ. Two families working in Central Virginia for three generations. Born and raised in Virginia, those who know tradition know it isn't old. It's established, aged. Foster Fuels and Craft Automotive are helping to grow businesses and provide jobs to families in our community and supporting growing local business. Foster Fuels and Craft Automotive, locally supporting today and tomorrow. About set to light the fuse on a brand new season of Flames basketball. Scotty James sends it in. Goes off the window for two, and there it is. Cavill crossover, smooth. George Pacheco hoist and hit. Back at Williams Stadium, there's a look at Dot Richardson and the Liberty Flames softball team getting their rings after winning the Big South Championship a year ago. Very nearly made it out of the NCAA Regionals as well as uh, Dot Richardson continues to lead that program towards bigger and better things. Dot's an Olympian, right? She is like the Michael Jordan of softball. She is. Yeah, Two-time gold medalist. She wow. is uh, the real deal. And uh, that team's certainly getting better and better year after year. I bet if they put you on the mound and pitched against her, you would strike her out, wouldn't you, Matt? Huh? Probably not. She's pretty good. <laughs> I've seen her still. She can still swing it a little bit. Yeah, Dot, yeah, it's like riding a bike. She gets in that batter's box. She can still swing it a little bit. All right, Idaho State in some dangerous territory right now. Ball on their own one-yard line. Goaler gets under center and just going to run four, try to get a little breathing room here as he's able to pick up a couple. Aiden Alvin with a fantastic punt put him down inside the one yard line those special teams plays are that third phase of the game that can make a difference so the Bengals able to pick up two brings up second and eight now Beller in the shotgun a handoff up the middle not much room there as big Devin Pearson number 34 fills the hole and wraps up Ty Flanagan Pearson, a big boy, Juco transfer. It's one of those kind of run-stuffing defensive tackles. Say about big third downs early in game, especially for Idaho State to be able to convert here on third down is very important for them right now. It'll be a third and six. Guller, stands in the pocket, pocket collapsing, able to get off the pass. It's caught, and they'll have the first down. So he's able to kind of slide in the pocket and complete that one to Schubert. That is a really, really good job by Guller. We all know what it's like to be standing in the red part of that end zone with the safety coming down on you potentially and be able to be patient enough to deliver the ball and get the first down. Big time play by him. They'll go back to the running game now. Boy, that tackle was made by the offensive lineman. Now offensive lineman, 77, that's Preston Holfelt. He was heading the wrong direction and ended up taking down his own running back. Yeah, that's the lookout block of look out here, I'm coming. <laughs> and right knock you down. So just a little bit of miscommunication there. I'm sure they'll get that corrected. So a loss of one. He's up second and 11. It's Idaho State team just outside the top 25 in the FCS as flag comes in. Maybe a little movement on the offensive line. Let's see. False start. 
offense. Number 66, five-yard penalty, second down. These are the mental errors that Idaho State can't afford to make, get behind the chains and, and second and long now. Bengals suffered a heartbreaking loss a week ago at UC Davis. They were leading that one by a couple of scores late. Let it get away, ended up falling in overtime. But a program that is, is heading the right direction, and as we've said, a dangerous one to face because of their offense. And right now they're just trying to get a little bit more breathing room. And they've had trouble getting the running game going with Ty Flanagan here on this second drive. Really like how Liberty's defense played that play. Defensive line working together with the linebackers. Build that flat wall and then allow the linebackers to scrape and fill. That's how you play proper defensive front of foot, front football. Third down and 14 now. Guller with the flag down, looking for his brother down the field and overshoots him. Now we'll see what the flag's all about. That's a free play for the Bengals. Liberty... Went to sleep there a little bit after their man offside. jumped outside. Defense, number 14, five-yard penalty, third down. That was Solomon Ajayi, and for folks back in Idaho, you know that name. His brother Jay, a star at Boise State, now running back with the Philadelphia Eagles, although he's out the rest of the season with an injury. His younger brother Solomon has been the leading tackler for the Flames this year and really filled a huge need for them at the linebacker position. So third and nine now after the penalty. Geller running out of time, being pressured by Wells, rolls out, now going to have to tuck it, bounces off a tackle, lowers the shoulder again, and has the first down. So Tanner Guller running for his life, able to break a tackle and move the chains. Tanner's a tough man to bring down, and he has that shown through with all his rushing yards this year so far. They move quickly to the line, hand it off, pick up about a yard there on first down. That's a big third down conversion for the Bengals. And missed tackles. That's something when this Liberty defense was struggling earlier in the year. Yeah. That was part of the reason. We have got a guy there in position, but aren't able to wrap up and get him to the ground. Yeah, we've seen a few of those so far in the first quarter. And off up the middle. Here's Madison again, and he's got room to rumble. Madison being chased down by Bajor Wilson and taken down inside the 35. But James Madison having some success here early in this ballgame. James Madison is a patient runner and he's a crease runner. When he sees a crease, he lets it go. Why that turned into a big play is because Liberty's in man-to-man -man defense. The receiver ran across the field, which took the corner with him. Madison hits a crease and he's off to the races. Now Guller looking downfield, looking for his brother, but overshot him as he was unable to connect and good coverage down the field by Jeremy Peters. Those are the balls that the Bengals are going to have to complete in order to give themselves a chance in this game. They've had great success in the past of completing that jump ball, sideline jump ball, 50-50 ball. They're going to throw a lot more of those before the end of the day. So second down and 10. Duller. Gives it to Madison again. Good cut, has room to run, has the first down and more. Inside the 15, down to the 13. And James Madison is having himself a day. Like I said, Matt, James Madison is a crease runner. He sees the crease and he explodes and goes. They give it right back to him. A little hesitation that time and wasn't able to pick up much on that carry, but already six carries now and he's approaching 80 yards. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's the recipe that the Bengals need to do in order to win offensively. If they can run the ball really well, attack the outside and make some plays, they'll be able to help them keep the ball away from Liberty's offense, control the clock a little bit, and keep them in this game. Madison gets a breather. Ty Flanagan back in the ball game. Three wide receiver set to the right. Guller going to keep it, wrapped up and dropped. That's the freshman Austin Lewis there getting a hand That's on That's the end it. of the first quarter. And that will get us to the end of the first quarter. So 7-0 Liberty, but Idaho State driving, trying to knock this thing up on homecoming 2018 in Lynchburg, Virginia. every week it matters.
that's on the committee to look at the entire body of work. Anybody can lose to anybody on a week-to-week -week basis. The College Football Playoff Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. Three quick hits here before we get back to the game. AGG, Pat, what were you hearing? Does he have a, like an iron spleen or what's going on here? <laughs> you know, so the the original report was that it was mono, uh, which is something that I've had before, and it is horrible. Believe me, it is yeah. just awful. Your energy levels are down. You feel just like absolute garbage. Uh, on follow-up report with the doctor, it was discovered not mono, so that's the good news. Um, the doctor report was basically go means go, which for AGG means you can play if you feel good enough to play. And as we've seen so far, it looks like he's good enough to go. James Madison. James Madison having a really good game. We hit it in the pregame. Uh, Idaho State's a well-balanced team. Have gone to the ground more. He's got 79 yards, and he just broke a big 40-yarder right before the quarter. Liberty defense. Look, we talked about it in the pregame. Uh, believe it or not, uh, you got to be happy. There's, they haven't allowed any scored points, but uh, I'm a little disappointed in their output so far. They've allowed 116 yards, and that interception by Corbin Jackson, actually, he was beat on that play. If it was thrown on target, that would have been six points. All right, Matt and Joe. Yeah, thank you, fellas. That is really the story of the game thus far, that turnover, because Idaho State has moved the ball well. Big third down and 10 coming here, though, in Flames territory. Guller looking towards the end zone, firing towards his brother. Overthrown and incomplete. Jeremy Peters made the grab, not able to get a foot down, and so that will bring up fourth down now and a field goal opportunity coming for the Bengals. Jeremy Peters played that very well. They try to run a post-corner route. They can get down in that red zone that they're gonna hit that quick post post slant type of route. Wanted Jeremy Peters to take the bait, come in on the slant, then run the corner behind him. He didn't take the bait. They ran the corner back and there was nothing there. So very well played by Jeremy Peters. Gamble Shido about a 30-yard field goal. That one is up and through. So he puts Idaho State on the board after a drive that began at their own one-yard line. So the Bengals moving the ball well, and they are in this ball game 7-3 early second quarter. Experience a blend of refined craftsmanship and raw power, engineered to take the crown. The Lexus LS500 and LS500H. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. So toot toot is kind of like, I should say, toot toot. That's when somebody's just feeling good about themselves, usually me. I never had a four game losing streak in eight toot years. Toot. Oh my God, talk more about yourself. Toot toot. I'm trying to find that wide receiver, the next, I say Randy Moss. Uh, that should probably be a toot toot and some push ups. I never get any props. Ricks. Toot toot. It's homecoming here in Lynchburg today. Decent crowd on hand. Turned out to be a pretty nice afternoon. Some rain early here in Central Virginia. Cleared way, and uh, we've got a good day for football. And thus far, a tight ball game. It's Liberty leading Idaho State 7-3. Bengals about to kick it away. Tell you what, Matt, Sparky looked focused. Yeah. I mean, he looked locked in. Mid-season form. Yeah. Pretty well, you know. It's all a mindset thing, Joe. You know that. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 had a toughness issue in the past, but he's overcome <laughs> that with a new uniform, and uh, he looks really locked in, dialed in, focused today. Speaking of the new uniform, Liberty's helmets today, you might have noticed, a little bit different. They've got the '71 on one side of their helmet there, in honor of the year the school was founded. As this one kicked away, and it'll sail into the end zone, will be a touchback. What a great response by Idaho State to have the ball at their one yard line, punt it into their one yard down to the one yard line, be able to take that ball, convert some third downs, and be able to come out of that drive with points. That was a big, big part of the ball game early on for the Bengals. We feel like any time a team from a lower level goes on the road against you know, a big bad FBS team, you want to kind of prove to yourself first that yeah. you belong and you can hang, and they've yeah. certainly done that here through the first quarter. Yeah, can you take the punch? And they've taken the punch. Flames handed off to begin this drive. Frankie Hickson carrying people with him. And he picks up about eight on first down. Frankie Hickson continues to run the, the ball really well. Shoulder square runner getting upfield, picking up a light, lot of yards right there. Buckshot swings it out. DJ Stubbs tries to make a man miss, makes a couple miss. Broke out all the moves there before finally being wrapped up, but not before picking up a first down. 
Yeah, when you can run the when a team can run the football up the middle, it really opens up that outside game. That's why you see that. You'll see a run up the middle, and then you'll see a quick outside throw. What that does, trying to bring those players in to stop the run up the middle, opens up the outside game. Calvert rolling to his right, looking downfield. He'll play action. Now he's loading up, sending it down towards Gandy Golden, and that one landed about five yards out of bounds. Maybe best for Calvert that it did because Gandy yeah. Golden is seeing double coverage. Yeah, Idaho State did a good job of covering that play. Liberty blocked it well. They got the reach block on the outside to be able to get buckshot outside of the pocket so that it was there, but the secondary of, of the Bengals covered it well. Andy Golden had 245 receiving yards in a game earlier this year. And as they hand it off to Hickson, not much running room, quickly wrapped up and dropped for a short gain. Trujillo, one of the group of tacklers there for the Bengals. Trujillo saw that play and he exploded to it. That's what was quick, decisive decision making. Be able to come straight down the line, see the play, hold him for a very short game. So big third down now coming, third and nine. Again, you feel like every play early on big for Idaho State is they're trying to stay in it. And, and as well, the longer they do, the more the pressure mounts yeah. on Liberty. You start kind of feeling that a little bit. And they get a stop here that can be very helpful, especially after that long drive they just had. Liberty's defense is out for a long time. Calvert has some time in the pocket, climbs, now slings one over the middle, and the catch is made. That's Caleb Coleman. He's having really a, if you want to say a breakout game, already Three receptions for the redshirt freshman. He had just three receptions on the season coming in. Caleb Coleman caught a nice touchdown pass in the last game. Yep. He's a big target. He's got good hands. He's going to get a lot more playing time. He makes plays. So first down for Liberty as they move into Bengal territory. Calvert looking downfield, loading up, letting it go. Has Stubbs wide open and can't connect. DJ Stubbs about four steps behind the defense, and Calvert couldn't find him. Like you said, he was wide open. Buckshot just overthrew him a little bit. DJ Stubbs is a, is a fast down the field football player, and Buckshot just put a little bit too much on that one, and that was close, but he was wide open. You're an old receiver, Joe. How yeah. frustrating is that oh. when you, you know you, you've got that touchdown and just can't quite connect? Yeah, you always say, just give me a chance. I just want a chance to be able to make a play. Coleman, he's getting a chance today. His fourth reception, nice pick up on second down. They're really trying to target Coleman. Even on that last play, Buckshot's first read before he overthrew DJ Stubbs was over to Coleman. He was covered. He came off at two and went to Stubbs. So the, the coaches have seen something in how much they like Coleman, and they're going to try to get the football more to him more often. Coaches have called Coleman a big 6'2 kid. Twitchy. He's a little twitchy. twitchy. They like the way yeah. he's got a little twitch to him, quick off the line. As Hickson takes the handoff, and looks like he may have picked up just enough for the first down. They call you twitchy back in the day? I, I they called you they, a lot of things, I, I know. Think, I yeah. think they call me a lot of things, but I, th Offside, I don't think twitchy was defense. one of them. <laughs> Number 22, five-yard penalty results on a first down. I think the word uh, lumbery. Lumbery? Maybe, yeah, maybe more lumbery <laughs> was used. You don't hear that one a lot. <laughs> You heard the call there. Penalty going against Idaho State. So the Flames get the first down. Thanks to the offsides penalty. And it'll be first and 10 now on the 32. Flames look to the sideline. Coaches signaling in the play. Calvert gives it to Hickson running up the middle. Nice pick up on first down. You know, you often, as you're a fan watching these games at home, Matt, and you look over and you see the, the quarterback look to the sidelines yeah. for the play. It, it, to give it an insider sort of point of view of that is what the coaches are doing. It's, a lot of times it's simple. They're, cut, they're counting numbers in the box. So if there's four, five guys in the box, six guys in the box, they're going to run the football. They start bringing that seventh, eighth guy down the box, they're going to take the matchup and throw the ball. Now we're going to throw it this time. Looking for Gandy Golden in the end zone. Touchdown! Gandy Golden too big, too strong. Too good. His sixth touchdown grab of the season. I couldn't have said any better, Matt. This is too big, too strong, too good, exactly. But Buckshot for the bad overthrow he had comes right back and couldn't have put that ball in a better place. And when you allow a man of that size to be able to go up and get those balls, he's going to win it nine out of ten times. Caleb Brown's a good defensive back, but he's 5'10", going against a 6'4 guy. And that's just not fair, and that's a missed extra point there from Probert. 
So the Flames get the touchdown, can't tack on the point after. As it is, Gandy Golden, welcome back. Shakes off the sickness and is breaking out in this ball game. Flames lead it by 10. College football, we brag about every week it matters. It's on the committee to look at the entire body of work. Anybody can lose to anybody on a week-to-week -week basis. The College Football Playoff Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. The final chapter of the critically acclaimed television event. It's this monumental gathering of people that all share a love of the game of basketball. Well, Liberty answers an Idaho State scoring drive with a score of their own. The touchdown pass, 29 yards to Antonio Gandy-Golden. Makes it 13-3 Liberty. And what do you think, Joe? You got to use a Brillo pad to get that stuff off? How do you, how do you do that? I, I was just in get all that glitter off. It looks great. You know, as yeah. a fan, you're in yeah. the game. And, but then when you come off that emotional <laughs> high, that a lot emotional of, high, a lot of regret when, there. and you got to yeah. get to the actual shower and get yeah. that stuff off, I, it's it's a process, I imagine. <laughs> and then the next week, you're thinking in the back of your mind, I'm going to put this stuff on again yeah. and got to get it back. It's commitment. It is. It's commitment. You give the girls credit. It's yeah. committed. Yeah, team appreciates it. Yeah. Flames all set to kick it away here. A little bit of a breeze blowing. We've seen a couple of times the ball blown off the tee. Nice line drive kick taken down around the two-yard line. The return opportunity coming here for Idaho State. Gets it out to about the 27-yard line. And that's where they will begin trailing by 10. Well, this Idaho State squad and head coach Rob Finnessy, even with the struggles Liberty has had defensively, felt like coming in, they do some things that they are going to have to adjust to. And with more on that, we check in once again with Bobby Bowling. That's right, Matt. One of Idaho State's biggest concerns coming into this game, like you said, wasn't surprisingly the offense. It was the defense. After the performance, Coach said they saw from uh, Liberty last weekend, he said they're very stout against the run. They said they make it difficult to do some of the things they like to do. So we're going to have to learn how to adjust as the game continues. And we saw in the first half, they put up 96 rushing yards. I think they found that adjustment. Yeah, and here's a few more. This one might go the distance. Look out! It's a foot race, and finally drug down the 24. The ball comes out late, but I believe he was down. Ty Flanagan breaking off a huge run to begin this drive for Idaho State. Yeah, whatever they found, whatever adjustments they made, it's working because they are running the ball at will. Yeah, you look at the replay here. They wash down the nose tackle with a double team crease at the linebacker just way overplays it to the away from the play side and the and the, the Red Sea is parted yeah. right there. Jeremy Peters with the touchdown saving tackle. That was a 59 yard run as now James Masson comes back in. There's a pass. Guller to Guller. Mitch making the grab, and he's down to the one-yard line. See, once again, this is where it gives you problems. You start running the ball straight down the gut of the defense. Now you can attack the field from the outside. The Bengals hurry up here quickly to the line, trying to punch this thing in. James Madison met by Ajayi, and he'll be dropped maybe a yard, half a yard there as it will bring up second two. There's a Guller's connecting. Tanner to Mitch. Guller yeah. to Guller. Those guys done have that done that, yeah, times. I was going to say a few yeah. times. Backyard, yep. on the field, wherever. As it's now second goal from the two. Guller lofting one up. Touchdown, the grab made there by the tight end, Austin Campbell. So they run the play action there, suck the defense in, and then just drop one over the top in a quick answer from the Bengals' offense. You have to really respect the Bengals' offense right there to be able to hit the long run. And then once again, now you set yourself up. Got to be able to protect that middle. Boop, right over the top. Touchdown. Campbell, a red zone weapon, his fourth touchdown on the season. As Shai Doe in for the extra point. That is up and through, and we've got a three-point ball game. So the confidence building on that Idaho State sideline as they have found some success offensively, and we've got a tight ball game. I'm going to lunch. You want some lunch? Dig deeper, get louder. To get to the top, you gotta go all the way up. 
Don't miss the Audi 2018 MLS Cup Playoffs tomorrow on ESPN. 13-10 Liberty, Idaho State just scored the touchdown. This was the play that kicked off the drive. How about the run here by Ty Flanagan? Look at that all, Joe. Yeah, the guard works down over top of the nose guard. The linebacker played it the wrong way. He was in the wrong gap, which opened up that huge, huge hole. And then it was just as, as Chris Berman would say, it was a rumbling, stumbling, <laughs> running, stumbling, <laughs> running after that. Yeah, you got to stretch after breaking yeah. off a run like that. You're not really prepared to run 159 yards sometimes and uh what, what a job offensively these two running backs each averaging over 11 yards per carry here early in this ball game as we've seen 155 rushing yards from idaho state thus far remember the success liberty's defense had last week against troy had not been the success they'd had all year they were near the bottom in the country in rush yeah. defense even after the troy ball game so whatever was working last week, uh, they need to find again here today. It hasn't been easy as Seneca Espinosa takes it at his own five. Looking for a hole, doesn't find one. Wrapped up, taken down at about the 23. As it goes right now, the Bengals running backs better keep those hammies loose. Yeah. Well, you think now, and it's what we talked about really earlier in this season for Liberty, there's a certain amount of pressure on their offense to produce every time they touch the ball. Right. Because the defense has struggled. It's struggling today. So the pressure kind of shifts to Buckshot Calvert yeah. and this offensive group to put points on the board every time you touch it because you're not exactly yeah. stopping anybody right now. And no question, well, and from the from the Bengals' point of view defensively, that's where we go back to creating the turnovers. If they yep. can create that three to four turnovers, they're going to have to give themselves a real good chance. Peyton Pickett taking the carry, doesn't get much as he's wrapped up and dropped. That was Trayvon Alloy there making the tackle. Trayvon Alloy is a large man. 6'1", 330 out of Murray, Utah. That's a tree stump. Yeah. That's a big tree stump. Peyton Pickett hasn't really gotten on track thus far today. He's rushed a couple of times for negative yardage. Brings up second nine for the Flames. And listen to this crowd. It is, now I realize Liberty has the football, but Idaho State has really taken this crowd out of the ball game here the last few minutes. Pick it again with the run. Lowers the shoulder. Powers forward and looks like he'll have enough for a first down. If you want to lift your team, you do things like Peyton Pickett does right there. Those are the little things that nobody really notices. The finishing of the run. Lowering the shoulder right here. Get that shoulder down. Get through that defender. Finish off your run. Those are the things that give you that little extra edge of toughness that carries down to the rest of the team. So first down now for Liberty. Pickett still in the backfield. Bring the fullback Lewis in motion to the left side, and that's where Pickett will look to head as he's wrapped up and taken down after about a two-yard gain. It looked like Aaron Manu, the first one there to make the tackle. Yeah, those are the little things that, that don't show up right away, but Liberty's mixing it up. They're trying to run straight at you on some runs, and then on that run, they're trying to hit you with the stretch play, get them moving laterally, and then you attack them horizontally. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can use the run game. Liberty having success running the football, or at least trying to force it a bit here on this possession. And we saw that last week as well. They didn't have a, a great number as far as yards per carry, but they really made an effort to establish that running game. And really down the stretch and on that last drive, it certainly helped as they were able to pick up a few more chunk plays. Calvert in trouble, wrapped up, taken down. The corner blitz, Anthony Ricks gets to him, and a big loss on second down as he gets Calvert to the turf. Yeah, you like, they, they surprised him right there, Matt. They surprised him with the corner blitz coming off the edge. And this is where you always have to be able to have a bailout. You have to have a short route to be able to go to right out of the gate. All the routes right there were downfield, so Buckshot had no option. Third down and 18 now for the Flames. We've seen now Idaho State brought that corner blitz a couple of times. Weren't able to get there the first attempt. The Ricks came flying in and hung on for dear life. Third long, here comes a little more pressure. Calvert avoids it, slings it downfield, has a man, but he is not able to stay in bounds. Caleb Coleman makes the grab, unable to get a foot down, and so the Flames will be forced to punt. I'm interested to see this one again and we get a replay on that. Coleman kind of lunging to the sideline. Yeah, he's out. But yep, not able to yep. tap the toe. Thought we were going to get a 
replay challenge. A little replay challenge there, but that wasn't even close. You like those challenges. I like those challenges. I like when we disagree <laughs> on yeah, a challenge. We yeah. get to fighting in the booth. <laughs> Aiden Alice comes in, now had a fantastic punt to pin Idaho State at the one-yard line earlier. Gets his left foot into that one. High spiraling punt. Gonna go over the head of the return man, take a Liberty roll, and just does roll into the end zone. Liberty unable to get down there to down it. And Aiden Alvis, wow, what a difference a week makes. He struggled last week in the punting game, but getting his foot into one there as we'll see Idaho State take it on their own 20 to begin this drive. Well, you saw the two brothers, the Goler brothers, connect on the last drive. They have had a lot of success here this season. As you take a look at some of their numbers on the year, Mitch, a big play threat down the field, averaging over 126 yards per game. And you know, I've been held in check thus far. One catch for 12 yards, but be surprised if we don't get through this one without him making a big play down the field. Speaking of, there's brother to brother. Mitch makes the reception. Puts on a little move, able to roll forward for a nice pickup of about 14 on first down. Yeah, those are the plays right there where they're do, they do such a good job, the guller to guller do such a good job of throwing the deep ball that it allows the defensive back to get off, and now you can run those shorter 10-yard hitch plays. Now they're going to run it. James Madison able to pick up about four, and you consider that a success the way the run defense has looked so far today. Here's, here's Mitch on the outside. Okay, drives him off. So he's, he's playing off him so far because they're really worried. Liberty knows they've been throwing jump ball after jump ball after jump ball all week during practice. So now that opens it up to be able to hitch the guller to guller connection. It's like go down, take a left by the shed, go around the oak tree, <laughs> come back through, and I'll hit yeah, you. They've been doing yeah. it since they're eight years old. So this is this is in your sleep for them. Second and six now. As they throw up a jump ball, looking to get that guller to guller connection once again, but. Mitch got a little bit hung up in the defense there and not able to get off the ball as well as he would have liked to. Yeah, some, a little bit surprised the ref. He grabbed a hold of him right there. Liberty defender grabbed a hold of him. A little bit surprised, but I think in the rest mind, potentially an uncatchable ball, so he kept the flag in his pocket. Third and six, this Liberty crowd starting to come to life. Oh, Colin Avery lunging across the ball, able to get back. Big down for Liberty defense right here. It's going to be interesting to see, do they, do they bring pressure? Do they drop people? What are they going to do? Looks like a four-man, five-man pressure comes. Six-man. Here they bring some pressure. Goler hangs in, looking down the field for Dean, and he has him. Dean makes the grab and is tackled inside the Liberty 25. Michael Dean, all five foot six of him, coming up big on that play. Michael Dean is an explosive football player. Liberty brings the pressure up the middle. They don't have a safety back deep. They attack the middle of the field. Michael Dean makes a play. Outstanding job. Beating Seneca Espinosa on that play. And there you see James Madison taking the handoff. A little out of sync there between quarterback and running back. Fortunate to hang on to the football as we get another look at that deep pass down the middle that went for 39 yards. Uh, Dean is uh, an explosive football player. Both these two outside wide receivers, Guller and Dean, average a ton of yards per catch. They attack you downfield. That's a big time play. Dean was the California State rushing leader his senior year in high school. Came here as a running back. And that pass trying to hit his brother and broken up. Bajor Wilson there. Bajor had a big interception a week ago. Able to get in front of that one and knock it away and brings up third and long. Bajor Wilson really dug his hips in, put his foot in the ground, drove on that slam. That's how you play cornerback defense right there. Quick feet, driving explosive to the ball, and make a decision and go with it. Good job. Third and nine, Ty Flanagan in the backfield. Standing behind Tanner Guller, and now a flag comes in and some movement. False start. Number 58, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, that's the center, Dalen Collins. And that will drive a coach crazy. Third and nine, difficult as, as it is. Right. And you're, you know, borderline field goal range as well. And you tack on a five-yard penalty, and that can change things. Some sneaky went on there because the Idaho State offensive line reacted rather harshly when they had that penalty. Liberty did something. Not sure what it was. Geller looking downfield. Stands tall, looking for Dean. He has him and away he had Dean 
behind the defense, but this time Corbin Jackson able to knock it away. Liberty needs to clean up some things in the secondary. They've had a few plays here where, as DJ said earlier, where they were behind the defense, got fortunate on an underthrow. Here's another one. He's behind the defender, but got fortunate on an underthrow and is able to get his hand in there to make a play. So it's fourth and 14, ball on the 27. So decision time for Rob Finnessy. Timeout. Idaho State. Yeah, look we're, first. What do you do here, Matt? Timeout. Well, take a look at Campbell Shido. His long on the season is 44 yards. That's what this one would be. So that's certainly part of the discussion as Rob Finnessy decides what he wants to do here. Three-point ball game. Liberty leading 13-10. The New York Giants unleash Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham Jr. as they battle the 49ers by the bay. Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. Presented by State Farm. Banana Man in the house. You know it's a big game when the Banana yeah. Man shows up. Yeah, Banana Man with sunglasses on. Every good student section. I really don't consider you a student section until you have Banana Man. <laughs> the I division that. one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody needs a Banana Man. Well, Idaho State electing to kick the field goal. Shai Doe, low line drive kick. And it comes up short. There's a stiff breeze yeah, blowing yeah. his direction, which makes it all the more difficult. And you saw I didn't have enough leg on that one. Yeah, that, that was on the money. That wasn't wide. That ball was, was going to go. That was, a, that was the wind that stopped that ball. And the wind just played a major factor in this game. Also playing a major factor was that false start penalty. Yeah, that absolutely. Five, five yards. Four yards. And that could have been big right. uh, on that field goal attempt. Yeah, this is a, uh, you get in these 13-10 ball games, a little bit of wind here, false start five yards here is the old saying, the devil's in the details. The yeah. devil's in the details in this type of game. So the Flames able to have a dodge a bullet there as Idaho State, once again, able to move the ball well, just stalling out in Liberty territory. And now Buckshot Calvert drops the ball and just has to fall on top of it for a two-yard loss at the 25. Yeah, Buckshot just lost a handle right there. This is a important drive with four and a half, a little under five minutes left in the half. Let's see what Liberty can do. Keep in mind, Idaho State will get the ball to start the second half as well. There's a run, some room to run. Frankie Hickson rumbling across the 40 and taken down near the 45. Really, really like Frankie Hickson on that run. He did two things. First thing he did is he exploded the hole. Then he showed patience, and then he exploded again. They're going to give it right back to him this time. He's on the wrong end of the explosion. Yeah, there's nothing to explode to. That was TJ to. Togiai getting in the backfield and taking him down. Young man out of Blackfoot, Idaho. Hickson will check out of the ball game. Peyton Pickett coming in as it'll be second and 12. You know, you haven't seen... Idaho State forced the turnovers. You talked about that mm -hmm. being key, but they have forced some negative plays, yeah. getting the Flames behind the chains a bit. Calvert having to step up to avoid the rush, slings it downfield and over the head, and is it picked off? Looking for the call, yes! Picked off by Caleb Brown as Buckshot Calvert sailed one up and over the head of DJ Stubbs. Caleb Brown caught that ball. I really believe he caught I know they're going to probably review this, but it's pretty clear. I think he caught that ball. That was a really good play. Buckshot does a great job here, stepping up into the pocket. Now he just got to bring the ball down and deliver it. But, yeah, he clearly caught that ball. That's that first turnover that the Bengals have been looking for. He had the receiver open. It was deflected. So Brown not only caught that, he caught one off the deflection. And have you seen anything that would make you think that wasn't a catch so far in the replays. Don't, I didn't. Don't even look at it. They need to bring Idaho State's offense on to keep the pace of the game going. That was clearly an interception by the Bengals. Off the deflection, fantastic play by Brown. So there's one turnover as Idaho State gets the ball back with 3.53 to go in the half. So you're in a great position right now if you're the Bengals. 
the way they move the football, you have the opportunity to possibly score to end the half and then get the football right back to start the second. Both running backs in there. They play action, looking downfield, throwing towards Dean and threw it up and over his head as not quite able to connect with his wide receiver. Yeah, had a little combination route going on there, trying to run a post by the outside receiver, and then he comes right off his hip. Dean comes right off his hip, runs that out route. Quarterback Guller just didn't quite make the throw. You know, Tanner Guller's been a little out of rhythm here, you could say. He's just 6 of 13 so far today. The running game has really kept him in it. Speaking of that, goes nowhere here as Jesse Limonier gets in the backfield and is able to get James Madison to the turf. See, this is what good defensive teams do, Matt, is, hey, your offense turns the ball over. You know what? Get back out on the field, incompletion first down, tackle for a loss second down, stop them here on third down, and get them off the field. Sometimes you have to lift the other side of the ball up. That's what the good teams do. An eight-yard loss brings up third and 18 now. Four wide receivers set, three to the left, one to the right. Guller. Has some pressure coming. Ball is loose. Loose on the turf. Ajayi trying to pick it up, and he does. Liberty forces the fumble, and Solomon Ajayi falls on it. Not just make the stop, but make a turnover to give the ball back to your offense. That's not what good defenses do. That's what great defenses do. Outstanding job by the Flames. And that was Lemonier again. He had the big tackle for a loss the previous play. Knocked that one loose. And Ajayi nearly overran that ball, able to kind of just dribble it up to himself before snagging it. And well, just like that, it looked like the Flames were heading in the wrong direction after their interception. So they get the ball right back with fantastic field position. Yeah, what a what a backbreaker for the Bengals to be able to get that turnover and not be able to do anything, turn it right back over. And so I, I got a feeling Liberty's going to take a shot here on this first play to try to score a touchdown right away. Gandy Golden, the receiver here to the near side. They've gone to him for one touchdown already today. They like jump balls up to AGG when you get down in this area. Give it to Hickson running up the middle. Keeps those feet moving and is able to pick up five yards on first down. You know, it does surprise me a little bit, Matt. I, I really like after a big turnover in the red zone like that, like you say, you got AGG down here at the bottom. Throw the ball up to him. Let him go make a play. Calvert gives it to Hickson again. More room to run. He has the first down and is down to the three-yard line. Flames hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. Calvert gives it to Hickson one more time. Stood up, taken down at the two. So the Flames with a steady dose of Frankie Hickson. His 14th carry already in this ball game as he's gone for 70 yards and a score. Frankie's starting to feel his rhythm. They give it to him again. Ooh. Boy, met and dropped. Ooh. Boy, that was a big hit there. Like that was 94 coming in. Okay, Noah Fuiava. Big defensive tackle. Spent a couple seasons at BYU before coming to Idaho State. And we've got an injured flame on the turf, and that's is that Frankie? I think it is. He took a big shot. And that's this doesn't look good. Staff quickly running out to, to tend to him. Oh boy, and you saw right at the end of that play, his head kind of get jerked to the side, and that's that's always scary. Anytime you, you see helmet to helmet like you saw there, but then a little extra yank on the end of it. Oh, good. Just saw him move his yeah, feet. Yeah, his feet are moving. That's, that's kind of the first, one of the first things you look for. Turner Gill, playing take coach out there as well as the training staff. Good to see him move those feet right away. And he did take a hopefully big just a shot, stinger. and then you see, boy, you just see right there. Yeah, good. Now that's stinger. That's tough to see, and good to see him sitting up now, clapping his hands, and who knows what the rest of his day looks like. But just go, a thrill to see him up and moving around. And such a good young man from right here in Lynchburg, and having a really good junior season. And. He's telling his team right now, punch this thing in. You can see him yelling at his, at his guys, trying to encourage them as he comes off the field. 
Flames already down one running back. And Torrey Matthews, who started the season at that position, out today, missing his fourth straight game. So Peyton Pickett now checking in. Bring the full back in the yeah, game. Yeah, Flames going to live formation. They give it to Pickett. Breaks the arm tackle and walks in for his seventh touchdown of the season. That's pretty that's something else now. It shows, shows you what I know, right? They, I'm asking for him to throw the jump ball to AGG. And Liberty literally said, we are going to run the ball right down the middle of the field until we get into the end zone. So what Joe Daly's trying to do right there is just trying to make a statement. Yeah. He's trying to make a statement, not necessarily to Idaho State, but make a statement to his own team. Say, if we're going to succeed, we're going to have to run the ball right down the middle for touchdowns. So on comes Alex Probert. Missed his last extra point. It was tight. That one up and through, so the Flames push their lead out to 10. Some power running coming after a Liberty interception on their last possession. And Peyton Pickett has kind of turned into that. You get down near the goal line, he just has a nose for Pater. That's his, as I said, team leading seventh touchdown. And it's going to take more than an arm tackle to get him to the ground. Yeah, look at that. Look at that young man right there. Big shoulders, big arms, hips. Thighs. A powerful look, 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 look at those thighs. He looks like Quadzilla. <laughs> Good to see Frankie night. Hickson on his feet Woo. as well. Yeah, there's Frankie. Good. You know, I had an opportunity to become good friends with Frankie's mom and dad. And uh, I'll tell you what, everybody thinks Frankie gets his toughness from his dad. Uh-uh. That mom is a bulldog. Misha. Misha, Misha, right? Yeah. Misha is a bulldog. And uh, she's, a, she's a sweet bulldog, I'll tell you that much. But Frankie is... Uh, Frankie's a tough football player and comes from a comes from a really good football family of good people. He has that longtime college yep. coach here at Liberty as well, as a number of other places. So we'll see if he's able to get back into this ball game or not. But definitely good to see him up and moving around. So the Flames lead it by 10. Minute 51 to go here in the half as Pierre gets ready to kick it away. Ball blows off the tee for about the third time today. Idaho State trying to make something happen here before the break. That kick going to be fielded at the five-yard line. So an opportunity for a return here to get things going, and they've got some daylight. Great return into Flames territory as that was Trey Bell taking it on a big play. To, just when you think the momentum is shifted yeah. back to the Liberty side, Idaho State makes a big play to kind of keep the spirits up on their sideline. Yeah, and this is where Liberty struggled last week versus Troy was in their kickoff coverage unit on the special teams. And so having the win at their back, a little surprised they didn't get a deeper kick into the end zone. But that struggle continues this week with a big return by the Bengals. They really, I'm sure they focus on this week at practice, they really need to kick off, clean up that kickoff coverage. So Idaho State in Flames territory to start this drive. They have two timeouts as well. Handoff is up the middle. Ty Flanagan takes it, and he gets nothing on the run. Yeah, you'd think with a minute, coming down to a minute 30 right now, that Idaho State's going to want to move really fast with this type of field position. As we saw as well, the wind in their face. You're going to have to get pretty close for a field goal opportunity. Minute 20 now to go in the half. Guller throws it and dropped. He was looking for Tanner Connor, and that one was in and out of his hands. First time we've called his name, young man out of Kent, Washington. Just when you feel as if his Idaho State was starting to get their rhythm a little bit, now in these last couple drives, they've really struggled. This is a big third down. They can't waste this opportunity after that big kickoff return. Four wide receiver set, two to each side. Goler. Has some time, fires and finds his brother for the first down. Yeah, you, you know where he's going in crunch time. Yeah, you need a big play? Yeah. Look to your older brother, and Tanner connects with Mitch. They move the chains, and now this offense picking up a little tempo. They hand off. Some room to run, lowering the shoulder. Stood up at the 25 as that was Ty Flanagan on the carry. Flanagan over 70 yards now on the day. Really surprised they're not using a timeout here, but they're trying yeah. to go fast. I believe they still have all three timeouts or two timeouts. Two left, running. yep. They get set quickly. Guller to Guller, and his brother dropped it. Good throw right on target. Yep. Had first down distance, but Mitch 
Maybe thinking about turning it upfield before he brought it in. Yeah, he's trying to get it up, grab it, get upfield, get out of bounds and stop the clock, but got to take care of the first part of catching the football. Another third down coming. Guller looking, now going to run it. Tucks it, spins away from one tackler, falls forward, and he's going to be close to the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. The clock continues to run, and now timeout has been called by Idaho State. You yeah. might have been able to pick up there on those timeout. field mics. Idaho State, their second. It will be a 30-second timeout. Rob Finnessy, the head coach, was yelling, is it a first down? Yeah. He wanted to know if it was, the clock would stop, stop the clock. until they moved the right. chains. But he hadn't got any indication from the officials, and it looks like they're just short. Yeah, he wasted probably five or six seconds there. Like I said, he thought he had the first down. And a little surprised the ref didn't blow it earlier to be able to measure. I think this is this is close enough to measure. Maybe not. I don't know if they're bringing it. Yeah, it looks like they're bringing out the sticks. So with what we've seen today, a field goal going this direction, come up well short. And that was a little bit of a lengthy field goal. I think it was 44 yards. Yeah. You have to think, I mean, if this is – and it's going to be you know, less than a yard if they're short here. You got well, it. Well, they got it. I was going to say you probably go for it on fourth and one or less. Now they don't need to worry about that. I'd be screaming to put, put yeah. five seconds back on the clock if I, Idaho State coaching staff, they, they let that clock run thinking it wasn't a first down. So as it is, 24 seconds to go here in the half. They're having a little discussion. The ref's coming over. It's a powwow time. Oh. Yeah, they're still talking. Idaho State's ready to go. Their offense is on the field. This crew trying to get on the same page. They're sticking with it. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so one timeout remains now for the Bengals. Guller looking to throw. Slings one towards his brother. Goes up for it and makes the grab. Guller to Guller, and that connection pays off for the Bengals as they put it in the end zone with 16 seconds left before the half. Yeah, you look at the replay right here. It's exactly what you said earlier about AGG. Put yourself in a box-out position. Guller puts himself in a box-out position, and he's a big, strong kid who goes up there with two hands, secures the football for the touchdown for the Bengals. That's exactly what the doctor ordered right before halftime. Yeah, he got Jeremy Peters on his back, able to kind of seal him off and make the play. Here comes an extra point attempt from Campbell Shido. What a response from Idaho State. Yeah, that's a big-time response right there. And once again, remember, they get the ball first to start the second half. And what did it start with, Matt? It started with the kickoff return. Yeah. That 50-plus yard kickoff return got it started for him. We are located at our booth right next to the visiting AD suite, and I can tell you they are rocking and rolling yeah. right now. There's yeah. some, some folks in orange next to us fired up. A few folks in orange sprinkled throughout that visitor section here at the stadium as well. Long trip. Uh, you and I were looking it up before the Whew. ball game. What, what was it, 32 hours if you were to try yeah. to drive it? Uh, Matt, you and I would be at each other's throats yeah, we'd, by we'd like, kill each like other 12 before, hours. Yeah, about 12, 12 in, No, I, think. I could go 18 hours with you. <laughs> and I mean, I, I'm done. Yeah, you're a nicer guy yeah. than I am. I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's me. Yeah. It's, I feel sorry for you is yeah. what I'm more worried about. Yeah. Like, just, Joe, please just shut yeah, up We for get to about minutes. Rustburg. And yeah, be Rustburg. Over. Yeah. yeah, all right. We got to do this a different way. Yeah, long trip. But they are hanging in this yeah. game. They're playing tough, and I really respect this yeah, Idaho State team. Some of the team. folks yeah. there in that this was AD suite enjoying what they've seen so far. Yeah. They're digging into the chips and salsa, I bet, over there <laughs> after that touchdown. Turner Loaded Gill not as pleased, probably, with the situation, the development here late in the first half. As they'll squib it, kick a ground ball, scooped up, and rumbling his way across the 30-yard line was Michael Bollinger. See, I like that. There's 11 seconds. Okay, let's take a look at this thing, Matt. I want to see, interesting to see what Joe Daly decides to do, or if Turner Gill's already made the decision. There's 11 seconds left. They have the ball on the 36-yard line. They have all three timeouts remaining. So you have two plays here. You get two plays of 15, 10, 15 yards plus. You, with the wind at your back, yeah. your kicker's back, your starting kicker's back off of injury. Give an opportunity. I personally would take a shot right here. There you have it. 
There you have now. Now the guys and the guys down in the studio. There we have started all up with them again this week. But yeah, yeah. We'll see. I'm sure they'll run the ball. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here Calvert we go. Stands in the pocket. Just going to check down to Peyton Pickett. Gets across the 40. Rumbles to the 45 and is taken down there. And we'll see if does Liberty call a timeout here. They will. Timeout. So, Liberty. Oh, we're back. The first. 30 seconds. So we're back to that. Remember a week ago. <laughs> Remember a week ago. The Flames had actually, they were in Troy territory at that point with seven seconds left. Fourth down play elected not to throw a Hail Mary towards the end zone and said just to punt it away. A lot of talk on, from the fan base on social media and the like about that decision. Uh, obviously didn't come back to haunt the Flames. They won the ball game. But now you find yourself on your own 46, so you're at, certainly out of field goal range. Mm -hmm. Now you just win at your back, as you said. Roll out, throw it up for grabs, and hope something good happens, oh, right? Oh, this is it. It's all over. Now, they, they, like you said, it wasn't as good as field position before, but I have a feeling we have trips into the boundary here. We might get the Hail Mary. Gandy Golden, big target, 6'4". He's in there. Caleb Coleman as well, another tall receiver. Calvert climbing in the pocket. Hoisting one towards the end zone, and that one will be knocked oh! incomplete. Caleb Coleman went up for Got that one and looked like he had a play on the football. As it is, it falls incomplete, and we'll head to halftime with Liberty leading 2017. Here's another look. That was a good ball from Buckshot. Gave him a chance. It's a great ball. So we'll head to the break. Tight ball game. Idaho State hanging around. Stick with us. Halftime coverage coming up. We'll check in with the fellas and hear from Turner Gill as he heads to the locker room in just a bit. 2017, Liberty on top. Can't believe it. That everything sticks to Stefan Diggs' hands? No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on the car insurance with Geico. Geico. Believe it. Idaho State hanging around in this one. Mitch Guller brings them back to within three, and they'll get the ball back here to start off the second half. Their offense has been splendid. Bobby Bolake standing by with head coach Turner Gill. Coach, coming into this game, you knew how dangerous Idaho State's running backs were. They seem to find some success. How do you, how do you adjust? Well, we got uh, guys that are not getting their gaps. We got certain guys that are not doing their responsibility, so we'll go in there and get it corrected. Huge stop by your defense, forcing a turnover in the red zone. Your offense executes it and you know makes a score. What do you like from your defense? Well, I like our defense is playing hard. We're just uh, making a few mistakes there as far as who has our certain gaps. Like I said, in the run game, we got to make sure each guy do their responsibilities. All right, thanks, coach. Good luck there, I guess, Seth. Yeah, I don't know if it's defense making mistakes or just the offense and those running backs, Flanagan and Madison are that nasty, but boy, have they been rolling in this game. That offense has come in as advertised and it done extremely well. Yeah, Red, Idaho State, we talked about it before the game even started. Idaho State's a really well-balanced team. Yeah. They have 278 total yards right now. Madison and Flanagan both averaging over seven yards a carry. Both in the set, uh, Flanagan has 70 yards, Madison has 76. Both are just running at free will right now. They're just doing whatever they want. Coach Gill said he's got guys who aren't filling the gaps. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen a linebacker fill a gap all game yet. That's where it's falling apart for me on the defense. Yeah, the you, said, you said you really like their OC, their offensive coordinator, Brett yeah. Young Mind. Are you liking his play calling? Mike Federer, Federer is teaching a clinic today right now. He's mixing it up a lot of different plays in the run game is um, surprisingly really, really explosive. And I don't think the talent level is the same, but they're really beating them in the game of chess right now. And you see all of these big plays, especially uh, uh, with uh, Tanner and his brother Mitch, uh, they just had a lot of really good plays and positioning that the defense has been totally out of place. How are they able to get behind the defense? Because we saw in the interception by Liberty, yeah. the, the, the wideout was behind him. And then another opportunity here, Corbin Jackson, had a, had a chance where he got beat again. And what is going on? How are they sneaking in behind? Because well, you say they're athletes, maybe not on the same level, but at the same time, they're getting there. I think it's scheme. Uh, okay. I think the defense right now for Liberty is um, they're, they're, they're not having their, their head in the game right now. And uh, right now, 
the offensive coordinator is basically out coaching Liberty's defense. So is it time to go in there and just start kicking trash cans? <laughs> Pat, is that what you would do? I, I mean, the thing is, will the real Liberty defense please stand up? I mean, it seems like last week, Jekyll and Hyde that we kind of talked about. Last week, we look at the numbers. They gave up 293 yards all game. Well, at this point, they've already given up 278 yards of offense, 155 on the ground. Last week, they only gave up 133 yards. So maybe they need to go do some trash can throwing, some helmet throwing. They need to do something to get this defense defense ready to play. Is that the emotional letdown, though, that we talked about early on? Yeah, I do, and uh, there's an interesting, um, Idaho State's actually playing better than they normally play right now. They're averaging 529 yards per game. Right now, they're at 278. They're actually doing better than their average at halftime at this point. Hey, much more to come. Stay with us here. We'll be back in just a sec. This Geico ad is intended only for people who wear rompers. Gary forgot it's casual Friday. Just like he forgot to switch to Geico and save all that money. Hey, hey, leave Gary alone, guys. He's probably feeling pretty insecure right now. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. As we stated earlier on, Flames hoping to get their second win in a row at home this season. But, you know, we've talked about this Liberty defense. So successful last week. They seem dialed in this year. I mean, this week, however, they have been spotty. It's like you said, Jekyll and Hyde is a perfect way to describe them. How are these big run plays happening? Because it seems like, oh, okay, they're doing something well. They catch a guy behind the line of scrimmage, and all of a sudden, Buddy is gone for 90 yards. Yeah, let's not forget these running backs are really good running backs. You got James Madison and Flanagan both taking off. We see Flanagan right there uh, on a huge play, and he it's just great blocking up front. There's great blocking. We, Turner Gill just said it before his uh, halftime comments. And he said there's the guys not filling the gaps, and that's exactly what's happening. The offensive linemen for Idaho State are able to seal their blocks, wash everything down, and they're able to, and the running backs have great vision and speed to get through to the third level, and then Jeremy Peters saved Liberty on that long run right there. Yeah, some of these holes for the Idaho State offense are so big, even you could run through them. <laughs> right, right now, three of the top four tacklers for Liberty's defense right now are defensive backs. That's pitiful right now. The offensive line, or the defensive line, and the defensive linebackers are getting blown away and they're out of place. So would you say the Liberty offense is kind of feeling all right, same old, same old. We're back to the state of New Mexico, basically, and have the the feeling that they're going to have to outscore the opposition in order to get a win? Really, I think it's like we said before the game. Liberty's offense is kind of status quo. It's, well, let's come out and let's do what we do. We're yeah. going to throw the ball a lot. We're going to run the ball well. Liberty knows what they need to do on the offensive side. They're used to it because they've done it for six games this year. So it's nothing new. The thought is, okay, let's come out. Let's make some big plays downfield, as you see on the replay by AGG here. And then we see Pickett coming up the middle. Um, I mean, these guys are just doing a fantastic job on the offensive side of the ball, and they're going to have to continue doing that because if the defense doesn't step up, we're going to see a 45-44 to 44 shootout. Talk to me about AGG and Coleman. All right, AGG, a guy that we know and love already, great jump ball player, a guy that has NFL potential, and we see some of his plays here. An amazing ability to catch the ball behind the line of scrimmage, break a couple of tackles, drag guys with him. He's a man. But then we have Coleman, who we'll see here in just a second. He's a guy that looks like, is there a similarity between the two players? Just Coleman's a couple years behind him in age and maturity? You know, each of these guys, Coleman and AGG, have very similar body types. They're big. They have this big frame. They're heavy guys. Uh, they're guys that, in terms of matchup, when you're going against a 5'9", 5'10", corner, you've got the size advantage. They don't necessarily have the speed advantage. But what you see from these guys is they're big, physical guys. They're able to go up, get the ball. This is what's going to really fuel the Liberty offense going forward. Well, Flames up by three here. We're almost to the second half. Make sure you stay with us. We'll talk about the Flames' schedule coming up in just a second. You know that feeling when the last strip of grass is exactly the width of your lawnmower? That's kind of how it felt when we saved hundreds by switching to GEICO.
next portion of the schedule. Very pivotal for the Flames as we approach a bye week next week. But then the next three teams, it's going to be tough. You're at UMass, you're at Auburn, at UVA. You know, kind of look into the crystal ball for me, if you will. What's this next three weeks, four weeks going to look like for Liberty? It's going to be tough. They have to go up to a decent UMass team, and then they're going to have to play uh, a really good UVA team this year. And then Auburn, of course, everyone knows what Auburn can do in the SEC. They're really good, actually bounced back from their loss last week and won today. Let's call Let's call out Damian Sordolet. He is the news and advance <laughs> yes. reporter here, locally beat writer. He's saying, hey, don't chalk that up as an L right off the bat. Liberty has a chance, and you were tweeting at him. As, as the guy that replied to Damien and said, whoa, 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 buddy, to, to quote Lee Corso, not so fast, my friend. That one's going to be a tough uh, a tough match, and, and I don't see any chance, really, for Liberty in that one. Too many athletes that are going to be out there, and if, if we're using today's performance as any indication, that could be a really long day. And possibly this performance could be because they're doing the same thing that we're doing right now, looking ahead to the schedule and overlooking Idaho State right now, and maybe that's why the defense is flat. They need to worry about this game right now because yeah. they could lose. Second half of action still to come. Flames up 20-17. to 17. It's homecoming here at Liberty. Matt Warner and Joe Yak when we return. At T-Mobile, 40 bucks gets you an unlimited plan and a new Samsung Galaxy S9 included for every line. This is what you get with your $40 plan at Verizon. Recap, with T-Mobile, you get this. Four lines, four phones for 40 bucks. With Verizon, you get this. The choice just got a whole lot more obvious. Get more, because you deserve it. Only at T-Mobile. The demands are greater. The jobs, tougher. So we made your truck even more capable with legendary Hemi power. More people are switching to Ram than ever before. Out set to begin the second half here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Liberty leading Idaho State 20 to 17 just a few moments ago our Bobby Bowley caught up with Idaho State head coach Rob Finnessy. All right coach you emphasized this week that your offense needs to do better on third down conversions. You guys convert five in the first half. You know what are you seeing from this unit that you're liking? Well just the fact that we're uh, we're not giving up. We're uh, we're uh, fighting all the way. Uh, we got the ball back there with a minute left and uh, the guys felt they had an opportunity to go down and get some points on the board. Our biggest issue right now is we can't turn the ball over. That's that's the biggest issue of our uh, offense at this point. Coach, you guys find yourself in a good place coming into half. What was your message to the guys in the locker room? Take care of the ball, stop the run, run the ball, and uh, good things will happen. Thanks, Coach. Good luck the second half. Yeah, good things have happened so far. The Bengals trailing by just three as they take over here on the 27-yard line after that kickoff return. Their running game really carried them early as they rushed for 155 yards so far. And then you saw those flashes from Tanner Guller. Hardly what you would call a great first half from him, right. but he made some big plays uh, late in the first half to get him back within three. Coach said it best. Do what you're doing well and run the football. Guller comes out throwing, sails it wide of his intended target, looking for Tanner Connor there as he comes up empty. Tanner Guller just 8 of 18 in the ball game here this afternoon. Yeah, you got to think that the Bengals are really going to commit to the run. You start breaking down statistics, and when you start rushing the football for 250 yards plus a game, you're not losing many of those games. So they're going to try to get to those numbers. So second and 10, Guller going to throw it again, looking over towards his brother, and out his fingertips. So after all the success running the football, they try to kind of switch it up yeah. and come out and throw, and it hasn't paid off on the first two downs. Yeah, yeah, at the same time, that that – a catchable football right there. Have to make that catch, put yourself into a third and three situation. Instead, you're now you're in a definite passing down in third and ten. This homecoming crowd getting to its feet. Flames bringing pressure. Guller hangs in, throws out towards his brother, and again, just a little too tall. Looking for Mitch Guller on the outside and couldn't connect, so... Three straight passes, three straight completions, and a three and out will give the ball back to Liberty. Yeah, really exactly what Liberty needed defensively is to come out and make a statement early in the second half, be able to get that three and out, like you said, Matt, get the ball, and potentially, is that DJ Stubbs back on the punt return? 
I believe that's him. Looks like it. Yeah, he's an explosive punt return. Maybe get a return set up here and make a play on special teams. Kevin Ryan boots it away. Low line drives. Dubs makes the grab, trying to get loose. Spins back towards the near side. Makes another man miss, and he's got some room to run. Couple of blockers out in front, but just caught up from behind. And a long way to go for that yardage from Stubbs. An exciting way to get there as he puts the Flames in great field position. Take a look at those first half stats. And well, one thing that jumps out, the total yards there from Idaho State and what they were able to do. Yeah, hunt. Oh. During the return, illegal block in the back on the return team number 37. Well, you get that. Ten-yard penalty, first down. That news coming from the official there, the Flames field position, not as good as we initially suspected, but... Liberty defense going to need to make some adjustments here in the second half, and it looked like maybe they did a bit there on that first possession. Yeah, that first possession, second half, they get the three and out, get back. But you look at those, look at that breakdown of statistics: 155 yards rushing by Idaho State. Liberty's going to have to shut down the running game of Idaho State to give themselves a chance to stop them on defense and and, and be able to win this football game. Lionel McConnell in motion. There's Frankie Hickson back in this ball game. Good to see as he was shaking up. Uh, late in the second quarter, takes the handoff there. That's carry number 16 on the afternoon as Hickson's now run for 70 yards. See, from a technical standpoint, that's exactly what Idaho State wants to do defensively is, is in that 3-4 defense is build that flat wall and have those road graders stop them on the runs. There's Gandy Golden making the grab, spinning away from one tackler and picking up a first down. And the Flames, you might have noticed, have been without one of their playmakers for much of the day. With more on that, we check in with Bobby. Yeah, Matt, since the first drive, not seeing B.J. Farrell out on the field, you'll see him coming in, or out into halftime with sweatpants on. So not sure yet what's going on. Still looking to figure it out, but we'll keep an eye on him down here. Yeah, as it is, looks like his day is done. Remember, he was a little dinged up last week in that Troy game, left for a while before coming back and making what was the game-winning touchdown catch. But, yeah, it would appear his day is done, and Flames fortunate to have Antonio Gandy-Golden back because this is – quickly becoming a thin wide receivers group. Swing a pass out wide, Lionel McConnell with the grab, falls forward to midfield. Will bring up third and about three. Yeah, now you're seeing guys like Lionel McConnell, Caleb Coleman, these other type of players. Liberty has the depth at the wide receiver position. A lot of times it's just a guy sitting on the bench who's talented, he's young, he just needs the opportunity to play. And you're seeing some guys step up when B.J. Farrow's out, A.G.G.'s out, just gives other people opportunities. Empty set now for Liberty. Five wide receivers. Calvert, pressure coming, stands in, delivers a strike. And that will be a first down as Caleb Coleman comes down with the catch. Coleman now with his fifth grab of the day. Caleb Coleman's going to develop into an outstanding receiver. You can see the level of talent that there is with him. He's so long and rangy. He had a ball earlier. Went up and grabbed. Good player. And off to Hickson, has some room, gets through that first level of the defense, but a flag comes in, and we'll see if we get a holding call. Yeah, I think that one is definitely holding. This one's coming back. Holding on the offense, number 73, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's Sam Isaacson called for the hold. As you take a look at him there on the right side of your screen, just grabbing on, trying to get a guy down. Yeah, you got to keep those hands inside. And the main thing to offense off for offensive linemen, Matt, is when they stop moving their feet. They got to keep their feet. If you keep your hands inside and just move your feet, that can keep you can get from getting those holding calls. So first down and 16 now for Liberty. Calvert throwing. There's Coleman making the grab. Now fighting for extra yardage, able to get back what they lost and a few more. Coleman really it was that first catch. Remember a pass yeah. behind him. He reached back and make it. And I got to think as a quarterback, you see a guy kind of bail you out in a mm -hmm. sense. You, you build some confidence. I mean, I can throw it out to this guy in traffic and trust that he's going to make a play for him. Yeah, there's no question about that at all. He's a talented young man. Second down. Buckshot rolling to his right, looking downfield, loading up, letting it go, looking for DJ Stubbs in traffic, and it's picked off. Threw into double coverage, picked off, and come in the other direction, and now lost, unfortunately, for Idaho State. It goes out of bounds. That's Adkin Aguirre, a guy who had five interceptions last season, getting his second on the year this year. A real ball-hawking safety back there, and that was easy pickings. 
The problem on this play right here, Matt, was DJ Stubbs had a double move on. He's trying to run a, a, a slant, about a 12, 10 to 12 yard slant, and get the defensive back to bite up on him, and then was going to run deep past him. The defensive back never took the bait. So at that point right there, sometimes you just don't want to throw it up into the air, especially on a shorter receiver. It's an AGG, a Coleman, somebody like that. Then maybe you throw it up. But uh, the interception going back in Idaho State's favor. Was that the turnover belt? You see that? They oh, got the, yeah. like, the WWE belt oh. there they're wearing. Not much happening for Goler. He just tucked it and picked up what he could. Got about two yards. And what did you say, Joe? Let's there get the man. Go. Let's get Joe Yock some props here. <laughs> Create three to four turnovers. They created two thus two far. So, far yeah. so they are on track and certainly have done what it takes. Yeah, they won the 50-50 be ball right before halftime. Uh, Gulliver had the box out and was able to score the touchdown, so they're on track, things they want to do. They finally go back to the ground, and it pays off as Ty Flanagan weaving his way through for a first down. First time they've run the ball here in the second half, and they basically pick up right where they left off. Really, I, I just have to believe, especially if a coach said at halftime, they're going to really commit to this run game. Here it is again. This time, nothing happening there as he was stood up and dropped for loss of about half a yard. And once again, that's the key. Those are the little simple plays right there. If everybody defensively will just do their job, fill your gap, control your gap, let the linebackers come in behind you and make plays, that's what you have to do. Do your job. Five wide. It was a design quarterback draw. He gets about two, and then Jawan Wells puts the finishing touch on Tanner Gullick. Once again, early on, a critical third down coming up for both Liberty and Idaho State. Idaho State gets the interception. They want to be able to do something with it. Liberty needs to get a stop and get off the field. Third down and seven. This crowd trying to get back into this ball game. Two wide receivers to either side. Heavy pressure man-to-man -man across the board. Ty Flanagan, the running back in there behind Goler. Here comes that pressure. Got to get rid of it. Throws it across the middle. And he has his man, Dean. A foot race. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Bengals. Tanner Goer stood in the face of that pressure and delivered a strike to Michael Dean. And Idaho State goes in front of the Flames. Liberty brings the pressure. Tanner Guller changes the play at the line of scrimmage. You attack the middle of the field with man-to-man. -man. There's no free safety deep. Beat him on the inside. Dean beats him on the inside. And that's a fast young man, and he's an explosive player. He's going to get downfield. When you take chances like that defensively, it's a feast or famine situation. Second big play of the game for Dean. The extra point up and just does sneak through. And the Idaho State Bengals on the road on homecoming lead Liberty 24 20 so a lot of game left but boy this Bengals team looks confident as they lead the Flames by four best tailgate brisket no real football y pollo asado poops and wings dude subs hot dogs chili dog no dodger dog it's gotta be crawfish now you talk burgers seven layer dip ribs no contest hummus um what you need a hot grill and an ice cold coke of course football and coke come on it's got to be coke game day race day calls for coke you know it grab yourself a coke it's tailgate 101 this is the face of a man watching football on the super big Samsung QLED TV. It's also the face of a man who needs to sneeze. But he won't, because you close your eyes when you sneeze. Excuse me. Wow. The 4K Samsung QLED TV. When football looks this good, you can't look away. Samsung Black Friday offers start now. A 57-yard touchdown strike from Goler to Dean puts Idaho State on top. And with that touchdown pass, Tanner Goler has now tied Justin Arias for the most touchdown passes in Idaho State history. 64 career touchdown tosses for Tanner Goler. And the way he's going, he's going to have an opportunity to break that record and have it all to himself before this day is over. That's what they refer to as... Slinging the rock. So he's slinging it, that's for sure. They're slinging it, they're running it. 
Idaho State having a lot of success moving the football today as they boot it away to Liberty. Seneca Espinoza will take it at the eight. Espinoza has an alley. He gets across the 40, lowers the shoulder, and falls forward across midfield. And was that, was that the kicker that, that took not... one on the chin there? I think that was Kevin Ryan trying to come up and you know, usually your kickers, they kind of come up oh, yeah. unwillingly a little Ooh. bit. He, he hung in there. Give the kid oh. credit. He hung in there, but... He went for they, the side. Yeah, he, went for he, the, he went for the Rhett McGibbon side <laughs> shot hockey check right there. You may want to talk with Flames punter Aiden Alvis about how you do it. <laughs> Alvis, remember back in the Ooh. Army game, went human missile oh. head first. Was actually tossed for targeting. Uh, they got some national attention, actually. <laughs> but uh, got the job done. Buckshot Calvert finds Caleb Coleman. Picks up about five yards on first down as he's really seems to be building a rapport with the redshirt freshman. Yeah, the more you see Caleb Coleman play, the more you see him catch the football. You said it earlier, he's twitchy. I see why I yep. see why the coaches say that. He's a big target, but he's he's twitchy in those muscles. He's quick. Second and five. Calvert throwing again, looking for Coleman. That one just a little out in front. And just like that, it's third and five. And I feel like we say a lot big third down. Yeah. But it feels like in a game where both offenses are moving the ball well, every third down kind of is. Right. Flames right now down four. You give the ball back and Idaho State scores. You're down two scores yeah. now in the second half, and that's not a spot you want to be. Yeah, one play, one play at a time right now. Uh, Buckshot made a really bad read on that last play. It was an RPO play. He should have handed the ball off, got greedy, and tried to throw the slant. Just take what they give you. Idaho State showing some pressure. They're they're we'll see now if they back out of it. I think they're going to stick with it, bring pressure. We get down here at the bottom. Two on the play clock. They get it off, sling it out wide to pick it, and he can't hang on. That throw a little out front, down around his knees, but it's still a, a, a catch you hope your guy can make. Get your hand on the football like that, but pick it, unable to haul it in, and the Flames will bring the punting unit on. Yeah, Aiden needs to pin him down again like he did earlier in the game. And, you know, the bottom line is, Matt, you, we can talk roundabout about you know, stopping offense, defense, all that. The bottom line is Liberty has to, if they want to get in this game, they have to be able to make some stops defensively. And now this two punts averaging 51 yards per punt. This one high end over end. Looks like he'll get the job done as it's fielded at the 10-yard line. So Alvis does his job. Pins Idaho State back on their 10, but the Liberty defense that has had its struggles today. This season, keep your stories interessante, just like Dos Equis, the only beer used to water every college football field. We need the beer blaster right here. Let's go. Dos Equis, keep it interessante. Nine sixteen to go in the third quarter. Idaho State leading Liberty 24-20. Early in the game, Joe, you gave us the keys to the game. Let's revisit those from the Liberty side of things where uh, it's not going so well. Yeah, not controlling the line of scrimmage, but the bigger one, Matt, is the minimize explosive plays. Uh, I'm going to say Idaho State scoring 24 points here in the third uh, total in the third quarter, only with nine minutes, just over nine minutes to go. They have not minimized explosive plays, but they got to play their base defense. Get in your base defense and make stops. Guller going to throw on first down. Has time now looking down the field for his brother. Lofts it up and just over his head. Had the one-on-one -on -one coverage, middle of the field with Jeremy Peters. Just threw it up for grabs and couldn't quite drop it in. I'm, I'm really surprised, Matt, especially after that last touchdown play to Dean where they brought the pressure, they brought the blitz up the middle, they played cover zero. What I mean by cover zero is man-to-man -man defense with no deep safety. Even on that play, there is no deep safety. The Liberty needs a deep safety to protect that long ball. They're going to throw in and out of the hands of Dean. That one just a, a little bit behind him, but a ball he should have caught. And it's third down. Or do you think it's, are they walking guys down to try to stop the running game that's hurt them so much? Yeah, in many ways, that's exactly what happened. But yet at the same time, you can always play. You can stop the run and still play with a deep safety. Okay, and I just, I'm a little bit baffled, I guess, at the reason why Liberty isn't keeping that deep safety, especially with as many explosive plays that have happened. Third and ten, four wide receiver set. Guller 
Has time, now rolling to his right, being chased by Lemonnier. He throws across his body into traffic, and it's picked off! Threw it into traffic, and Isaac Steele was waiting there to snag it. Great play by Isaac Steele right there. But what that starts with is covering it the up for covering the initial routes, caused Gullick to be able to scramble out. Now he had to make a throw that he really didn't want to make. Get him uncomfortable in the pocket, force him outside of the pocket. He's up against the sidelines, has to make a throw he doesn't want to make against his bottle against his body, and Steele is able to come up with a great interception. Those are the game-changing plays that Liberty needs. Steele, sophomore out of Phoenix with his third interception of the season. He's eating right there. That's right. Yeah. That, wow, that, oh, that's frightening. <laughs> it's getting close to Halloween. <laughs> Flames with the football. Handoff goes up the middle for two or three. That's actually Frank Boyd. So we get a look at him. His first carry of the ball game. Boyd, I don't believe, has had a carry since the opener wow. against Old Dominion. Has some faith in him. A tight game like this to put him in the game. Redshirt freshman. Like had a really good spring. One in offensive MVP of the spring for Liberty. But haven't seen much of him at all this season. Calvert, pump fake, now looking down the field, taking a shot towards Gandy Golden. Goes up, makes the grab, reaches for the end zone, touchdown! How do you stop this kid? <laughs> yeah, you look at this play right here, Matt. We call this the phony right there. Do the phony screen on the outside. Then AGG takes on the deep route, and all you got to do is put it somewhere in the zip code. If you just get it somewhere in that 24502 zip code, <laughs> he's going to come down with the ball. What a grab, and then the strength to finish it and stay in bounds, reach across for the touchdown. Flames with a quick answer. 37-yard strike to Antonio Gandy Golden. How good is it to have him back? The interception from Steele, the touchdown to AGG, and Liberty back on top midway through the third. Gary, 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 I am proud of you, my man. Making simple, smart cash back choices. With Quicksilver from Capital One, you're earning unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. Like on that new laptop. Quicksilver keeps things simple, Gary. And smart, like you. <laughs> and I like that. I guess I am pretty smart. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. What's in your wallet? Twenty-seven, twenty-four. Liberty goes on in front on this Antonio Gandy golden touchdown grab. Thirty-seven yard strike. As you take a look at the very quick drive summary there from Liberty. Two plays, thirty-four seconds. Antonio Gandy golden with that grab as well became the fifth Liberty receiver to ever reach twenty career touchdowns. It was his second of the day. He's gone over one hundred and two yards on the day. And take another look at this grab. He's just so big and physical. And then the strength to finish the run. And remember, he was out last week. They missed a big weapon. These are the two games he played in out in New Mexico prior to last week's game. 245 at New Mexico, 115 against New Mexico State. They managed to grind out a win against Troy last week without him. But you see what he brings to the table. He does things that not a lot of wide receivers at this level can do. Yeah, there's one thing that he also does. That, is, that he does very well, and that is even at six foot four, a lot of tall receivers, you don't see them being great jump ball receivers. And the reason that is, is they allow the ball to get into their body so the defender can get to them. What Gandy Golden does a really, really good job of is he high points the yeah. ball. They always say catch the ball at its highest point. And at six four, when you catch at your highest point, it's a, it's a difference maker. Well, this won't make anybody happy on the Flames sideline. That kickoff goes out of bounds, so. Idaho State will get decent field position here to start this drive. Aaron Peart kicking a low liner that just skipped out around the one. I'm going to say this is the most critical. Kick uh, out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball would be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. I'm going to say this is the most critical stop for Liberty's defense right now after getting the interception, getting the touchdown, having the momentum right now. 
This is where they need to get a three and out, a turnover, whatever it may be, to get a stop right now and give the ball back to the offense. Ty Flanagan in the backfield. They'll give it to him right up the middle. They're able to get maybe one. Well, remember a week ago, the big talk was Liberty defensive coordinator Robert Wimbley moved from the field up to the box, and they felt that made a big difference last week in their ability to make adjustments and to get calls in. They struggled in the first half. But we'll see if those adjustments, if they're start, starting to be able to make some here now as they have a lead midway through the third quarter. Part of that will be stopping this running game. They haven't done it very well to this point. As Flanagan able to dive forward for a few, but will bring up about third and six. Much better right there in Liberty's running defense, being able to keep their shoulders square in the gaps. Linebackers not overplaying things, so when he cuts the ball back, the linebacker's there to make the tackle. That's much improved. Idaho State, 6 of 11 on third down here today. They look to the sideline. You get another pressure, six-man pressure. I say just bring four, drop the rest. Two wide receivers to either side. Goler stands in. Now running out of time. Loses the football. It's on the turf. Picked up by an offensive lineman who falls forward. Fortunate to keep the football. As that was Dakota Wilson who scooped it up. Able to maintain possession. And Idaho State fortunate that they'll just be able to punt the football away here. Yeah, that's the classic play right there, Matt, as a defense. You want to be able to rush four, drop the rest, be able to get pressure on the quarterback. When you can do that, you don't have to get in all the tricks and all the gimmicks defensively and different types of pressures and whatnot. If you can just rush four, drop the seven, and be able to play football that way, you can win a lot of football games defensively. Low line drive kick over the head of Stubbs. Bouncing down inside the five, and it'll go into the end zone. So that punt, not quite able to check it up. Down inside the 10-yard line, the Flames will get the football on their own 20. Well, we've seen this Liberty defense, last couple of possessions, yeah. step up and, and keep this Bengal offense in check. And now, when you do that, you let your offense, which as we saw, can score quickly, get back out there and see if they can create some separation. Exactly. And that started with Liberty doing what? Getting back to the fundamentals, getting back to their base defenses, and then making stops that way. Calvert, give up the middle. There's Frank Boyd taking the handoff again. Boy, he's rumbling now. 15 yards on first down for Boyd. Frank Boyd showed strong legs on that run. Way to finish the run. Got his knees driving up high after contact was made. That, those yaks, yard, well, what were you, yard, yeah. Yeah, 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 yards, yeah. whatever, yards <laughs> after run, cut, con, yard, yaks. Yeah, that's a lot of letters yeah. thrown at me right now. This boy <laughs> takes it for another Liberty first down. Well, whatever acronym you want to yeah. use, he's getting the job done. Yards after contact is what I was yeah, searching you're going for. That. <laughs> Boyd, retro freshman out of Chesterfield, Virginia. So a couple of first down runs for Boyd is. Liberty just shy of midfield. Calvert, pump fake. Now locking oh. one up, and their flag reigns in as they were trying to get it to Antonio Gandy Gold, but Kobe Lowe was hanging on to him for dear life, and he'll get flagged. Yeah, they ran that little hitch and go. Uh, Buckshot gave him a good hard shoulder fake, and Kobe Lowe took the bait, and, but he made a smart play, and that was as, as AGG was getting ready to run by him. He grabbed a hold of him, take the pedal in instead of taking a touchdown. Pass interference. Defense, number 15, ball will be placed at spot of the foul, automatic, first down. So once again, Flames moving the football quickly. And flags rain in here, it looked like a little movement up front. Officials going to get together and talk about it. There was no foul on the play. The ball had not been marked ready for play. First down. Yeah, that's a break. Rob Finnessy not so sure. He wants a little further explanation. We talked to him during the week. What a, what a great guy. I really enjoyed chatting it up with him. Second year with his program. It's that one off the fingertips of DJ Stubbs. Coach Finnessy said, you know, these wide receivers here coach here for two years 
took a position at Northern Iowa, was there for a week before uh, former head coach here at Idaho State, Mike Kramer, retired. And they called him up and said, hey, you want the job? You want the head job? So he was there for a week, turned around, came wow. right back, took the head job, and really has the culture kind of changing there with this program. Boyd, again, stretch play to the left. Picked up maybe one as it'll bring up third and long. Coach Finnessy saying, you know, our last loss, a tough one in overtime. You go in the locker room, guys are ticked. He goes, that's yeah. not the way it used to always be around this program. They're starting to really buy in and realize what they're pouring into it and, you know, how, how hard it is to win and how much work it takes to get good. And they're certainly doing that as there, as I mentioned at the outset, just outside the top 25. And a lot of folks have them projected to be an FCS playoff team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know from talking to you earlier, Matt, you said that he had spoken about, you know, not even really having a summer down. program. Yeah. Not fourth down is shown on the chain. And when you start getting guys involved in the summer program, showing up, and like you said, they, they become invested in the program. When you become invested in, and it matters to you, they, then those, those hard losses are tough to take. Trying to get a big stop here. Third down and nine. Frankie Hickson standing alongside Buckshot Calvert. They bring that pressure off the edge of, uh, down here to the bottom. Look for DJ Stubbs. Five on the play clock. Calvert going to roll to his right, right in some pressure. Steps up, fires on target. Antonio Gandy going. How about Buckshot Calvert avoiding the rush and then delivering a strike? I'll tell you what, that is. AGG has been the bailout, but Buckshot to be able to make that throw to adjust his body, step into it. Create that first down, big play. Hey, give it to Frankie Hickson for a short pickup. It looked like, initially, Buckshot was going to roll himself right into a sack as he rolled out to the right, but good footwork. Buckshot, a guy that people say is kind of sneaky athletic. And he showed it there. Now looking, I've seen this before, lofting it up. Gandy Golden makes the catch, dragging people down inside the five. Anywhere in the vicinity. 24502 is the zip code here in Lynchburg at Williams Stadium. If you get in there, Gandy Golden, <laughs> he's going up to get it. Flames moving fast. Hand off, powering towards the end zone. Is he in? Yes. Frankie Hickson for the second time today finds pay dirt. And the Flames start to create a little distance between themselves and the Bengals. Really, really like how the Flames mixed it up right there. Here's the grab by Gandy Golden that got, got him down inside the five, and then Hickson finishes off the drive. This Liberty offense continues to put up points, now over 400 yards of total offense. As Alex Probert kicks it through. So the Flames go up by 10. It's a leverage play right there. Get down, you have to have nose towards the goal line. That's a leverage play where Frankie got his shoulders underneath the defender and is able to finish the run and get across that goal line. Picks it on the day, 19 carries, 80 yards, and now two touchdowns. The Flames in all, three touchdown runs today. As this offense, you have the two interceptions from Calvert. That's been the kind of the one downside to what the offense has done outside of that. They have moved the ball at will yeah. and been able to cash in when given the opportunity. Yeah, it really helps having a guy by the name of AGG on the outside. No doubt about that. To bail you out and make big time plays. And he's been the difference maker in this game. He clearly. really, I mean, he really is. You think about some receivers, they got to get open for, you know, yeah. you know oh, he, he, and, and he doesn't have to be open. No. You throw it up, let him just go create. And uh, we've seen that on display here all afternoon. As he has 139 yards, a couple of scores. But at the same time, Buckshot is doing a good job because don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. Yeah. You know, don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. Sometimes, you know, it's coaches and players, you think you got to scheme up this or scheme up that and take advantage of this. Sometimes it's better just to keep it simple. Let's check in with Bobby as Liberty's defense takes the field. She has a little bit more on one of their key players on that D-line. Bobby? Yeah, Matt, I got a chance to talk to Devin Pearson this week, and I asked him, you know, when you were growing up, did you always want to be a defensive line? And he says, you know, actually he played running back all through high school, but he said the more he ate, the bigger he got, which his coaches convinced him that 
defense might be a better fit for him. He said, though, that experience at running back has helped him a lot. Helped him, you know, to see what, what running backs going against him are, are trying to read, what gaps they're trying to hit. So, a fun little story with Devin Pearson and how he became a defensive line. Yeah, it, it <laughs> happened at the buffet table. And as you said, Pearson, <laughs> right. as That's you're right. talking about him, he makes a nice tackle there on first down. Right. Pearson, one of the Juco transfers come from Mount San Jacinto out in California and uh, is really been a solid contributor in the middle of that defensive line. Pearson on cue made yeah, the he play. Knew. That was he knew. great play. He heard Bobby talking. James Madison going out of the backfield. They're going to sling it out to him. Makes the catch. Nope. Wasn't able to bring it in. Incomplete pass and quickly third down again. This defense... They're starting to kind of tighten the tighten the yeah. vice grips on this Bengal offense here the last few possessions. And you see what they've done, Matt? They've gotten back to their fundamentals. They're just covering people, dropping, being in the right places, fitting into their gaps, playing fun, fundamental defense. That's the way they're having their success and trying to instead of trying to be so gimmicky and getting burned. Liberty now subbing in. They basically have four defensive ends on the field. So a pass rush package right here for the Flames. Here they come. Shovel pass. Great call. Look at the room to run. First down and more as James Madison gets up to midfield. Boy, that was a fantastic play call. That was a right call at the right time. Liberty brings forth the outside pressure, and then he's able to step up, throw that shovel pass. That was a well, well-designed play. So a critical conversion on third down for the Bengal offense, and quiets the crowd for the time being. Beller gives it up the middle. Some room to run. This one could go the distance. Pass steal down the sideline to the house. Ty Flanagan got to the edge. It was a foot race. He won it. And this Idaho State team has no quit in them. Just when you think Liberty's fitting in in their gaps and doing all that they're supposed to do, they go ahead and make the, they don't get make this play and and this is the shuffle pass that keeps the drive alive. Yeah, that converted the big third down to Madison. He then checked out. Ty Flanagan came in, and he's now gone for 136 yards on the day. We talk about we talk about them being crease runners. James Madison, Ty Flanagan. When these guys see a crease, they hit it. They explode. They go. They're well coached running backs. Liberty came in, giving up. About 239 rush yards per game. That was 126 in FBS football. So far today, they've given up 226. So they are almost to their average, and we're not even out of the third quarter. A drive lasting a minute 15. Wow. That, that was just what the doctor ordered for Idaho State. Both these defenses by the end are just going to yeah. be hanging on for dear life trying to survive they've yeah. been out on the field a lot yeah once again somebody's going to have to make it this game is going to come down to potentially maybe two or three plays left or somebody's going to have to make a play on a turnover whatever it may be defensively in order to help their team seal seal the victory the thing that's a little bit scary matt for liberty is when you start pressing up 226 yards of rushing look at the statistics once you go past 250 yards you don't lose a lot of ball games when you rush for more than 250 yard so Idaho State's in a position to make that happen. Well a lot of times too if you're running the ball well you tend to wear a team down the right. deeper you get into a ball. That's exactly right. And with two running backs both having a lot of success here today that will be something to keep an eye on too as we get later into the later stages of this one. 2.37 to go here in the third quarter. A little squib kick taken by Bollinger. He's going to try to bust it outside. Lowers the shoulder the big fella. Rumbling up to about the 33 as Bollinger's second return on one of those squib kicks. And shown some athleticism. That's kind of, it's not the same thing, but last week you talked about, it was more of a high short punch kick we saw from Troy. Liberty didn't really try to do anything with it. We've seen on the squibs, that Bollinger, he's trying to pick it up and go get upfield, yeah. and it's paid off. Yeah, I like how Bollinger did that. The only thing I'd say right there is, in that situation, he's just a big bruise and fullback type of guy. And just go ahead and take the thing straight up the middle. Take it up vertically and get as much as you can, and try to instead of trying to stretch it horizontally. Frank Boyd back in at the running back position for Liberty. They're going to swing it out to DJ Stubbs in some space. Makes a man miss and then meets another one as Christian McFarland comes up and delivers the blow. So a short pickup on first down. 
We have a good football game here, man. It is. Long it is. Good I mean, game. you know, you try to tell people throughout the week, listen, don't sleep on this Idaho State team. And you're seeing why. They are a talented bunch. That one completed to Gandy Golden. And he is going to be about a yard, maybe two shy of the first down. You know, third and short coming up. Yeah, just like we talked in the opening segment, it's like Idaho State came into, came into Wave State expecting to win. And off. Boy, cut down. He's going to be short. So he was not able to get that first down. Yep. I think they're going to have to park this. Everybody looking to the sideline, and you're right. Here comes the punting team. So Liberty unable to pick up first down on third and short. Aiden Alvis comes in. He has been awfully good here today for Liberty. Three punts, an average of 45 yards per punt. There's another good one. Fair catch called for and taken at the 15-yard line. It's a good punt, but... Really the story there, the Idaho State defense standing strong on third and short, able to make the big stop. And once again, we've seen them always have an answer. Every time you think, here it comes. Liberty makes a big play. Here comes the avalanche, right? Yeah, the ball. You know, here it comes. Yeah. It, the Bengals have had the answer, and they've shown some mental toughness. I mean, it's a football's an amazing game. That all the momentum seems to be going in Liberty's favor, like you're saying. Yeah. Like, they're just getting ready to take this game over, and then it stops on a dime. Idaho Bengals come back, bang, and next thing you know, they've got all the momentum in their favor. Well, and you see some of the veterans on this team. They play like veterans, don't they? That pass out wide, guller to guller, and that'll be a first down. A uh, pickup of about 11. That is their, guller. Yeah, that's their staple play right there, Matt. That, that 10, 11 yard hitch route. They've, they've run that thing a thousand times, and that's their go to. And again, this hasn't been a game where Tanner Guller's, you know, he had the eight touchdown game where he's just dialed in. This has not been that game for him. It's been a grind yeah, for him. He's yeah. struggled at times, and yet they're still good enough and have enough weapons. That's right. And they're sitting here only down three. You can, the more I watch this kid play, this is a tough kid. This is a tough kid. I really, I really like him. He is playing really, really well as a competitor more than anything. No gain on first down, so brings up second and ten. Guller pulls it out now in trouble. Has a Jawad Wells on his back and still is able to lunge for it. There's that competitor yeah. you're talking about. He had big one. That took him for a piggyback ride there. Was able to dive forward for two yards. Yeah, Liberty had the right call on defensively. They slanted their front to their right side right into the play and but once again he's out there grinding it out at him look at that kid now to the last play of the third quarter when we That's come the back the third quarter time out it'll be a third and eight on their own 29 tight ball game in lynchburg 34 31 flames lead we all got we all need. Need. We all got we all need. the new season begins with nfl game pass let's go it's the dawn of a new day. Not a bad start for the young quarterback. A star-studded roster. Buy everybody into the end zone! Comeback kids. Touchdown, Giants! The quest for a sixth ring. Let's go! Watch every out-of-market preseason game live with NFL Game Pass. Start your free trial today. You don't just want easy. You want streaming all your favorite Netflix shows on fast internet easy. You want internet that helps you save on mobile easy. You want the best Wi-Fi you can pause with a tap. See? Easy. You want Xfinity because it makes your life simple, easy, awesome. Get a special offer on Xfinity Internet TV and Voice for just $79.99 a month for two years. Plus, get DVR service free for a year. Click, call, or visit a store today. 4 to 31, the score here in Lynchburg. All right, you guys obviously play a lot of football here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Have you ever been a game like this where the offense driving down the field, fantastic stuff. You get the touchdown, you feel like, okay, we got this. All right, boys. And then they come back and just <laughs> smack you in the face. Yeah, well, right. well go ahead. Go ahead. I was with you. My last two years here weren't very good. We only won four games my junior year and uh, three games the year after that. But I, I know exactly what it's like to be in this position where you have to rely on the other side of the ball. And uh, it's frustrating, to be honest with you. And right now, the linebackers of the defense for Liberty really have to step up right now. Solomon Ajayi only has three solo tackles. David King only has two solo tackles. 
not going in the right direction. Yeah, not at all. I would say 2010 for me when we were playing Ball State, ended up coming out with a win, back and forth game. Yeah. We needed the defense to make a big play at the end, and they did. But these teams are really even today, even with turnovers, Idaho State's hanging. Guys, I'm not going to lie. On the flip side of it, as a, we talked about being a competitor last yeah. week. You come out, you want to compete. I loved it when we would come out and have to go back and, and make plays on the field. Get the ball in my hands. I want to get out there and perform. Joe, you ever been smacked in the face? <laughs> Yeah, during this game, yeah. actually. Yeah, a couple of times. I, I, yeah. have to, I have to do that from time to time. Just to, wake him up. Yeah, keep him locked in. Thanks, well, you fellas. Don't, you don't have to wake me up. Matt hits me right in the back of the head. <laughs> Third and eight here. First play of the fourth quarter. Here comes the pressure from the Flames. Goaler steps up, lost one down the field, looking for his brother. And here comes a flag. Jeremy Peters, hands on his head, can't believe it. Yeah, don't Turner like that. Turner Gill walking towards the official. Not a fan either. Don't like that call. I thought that was really good defense. Defense, number two, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. A huge call as that extends this drive. Otherwise, they're punting it back to the Flames. Jeremy yep. Peters, a guy that doesn't talk a lot, Flames' best defensive back, just shakes his head. Yeah, what you try to do as a defender when you coach defensive backs, man, is you try to get them to capture the hip, run to the hip, and get hip to hip. That's exactly what he did. I didn't see that. So Idaho State with a break, perhaps. Handed off. Good power running up the middle by James Madison as he's now over 80 yards on the day. So from Liberty's standpoint, though, you got a call that you didn't like, didn't go over your favor. Guess what in life? Things happen. You don't always like it. Okay, so now you got to turn the page, move on to the next play and get a stop. Hand off again. Stood up. Now gets a little help from his offensive line, giving him a little shove there at the end. He's going to be right around the first down marker. We'll see how they spot this one. Officials getting together. Giving a look. Thinking about it. And I think they're going to measure. First down. Or call in another official. Yeah, first, here comes the change. First down by the white stripe of the football. They That's don't, what you're calling it? They don't call me Eagle Eye Joey for nothing. I've never heard anyone call you that. I haven't either. <laughs> well, let's see. Boy, you oh! Wow. Yeah, they will now. They will now. They will now. Take that one, Rhett McGibbon. <laughs> <laughs> so by that much... They pick up the first down. 14-13 to go in the ball game. What a game it's been. Back and forth. A couple of good offenses. Just exchanging blows. This has been an exciting football game. It has. So the Bengals in Flames territory. First and 10. Guller pulls it out. Looks down the field. Nowhere to go. Now going to tuck it. Try to get what he can. And just does get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, really, really surprised that Guller didn't pull the trigger on the 10-yard hitch route. They had the concept they had going on right there, and that was a 10-yard hitch route by the by the outside receiver. The inside receiver was running a deep post corner, and he had him open. It's surprised he didn't pull the trigger. That's one of their favorite plays. They've been throwing it all game. So second and 10 now. Guller stands in the shade, hands it off, and pick up maybe two. Maybe three with that extra lunge at the end from James Madison. Brings up third and long. On a side note, Matt, you got to be real confident parents to name your kid James Madison. That's true. You know, I like that a yeah. lot. I mean, you're saying my kid's going to be something right there. When you start, your last name's Madison, you name him James, that's impressive. Well, it's kind of like it, and, and Idaho State's backup quarterback is Gunner Amos. I feel like you see a lot of quarterbacks named Gunner. Because if you're going to name your kid Gunner, yes. you kind of know what direction you're yeah. going to push him right yeah. away, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know he's probably, he's not going to be a, you know, a punter, right. but he's named Gunner. Yeah. You, know? he's, you he, want him slinging yeah. the rock. He's slinging the rock, and you got, you got confidence, you have a little swag to you. Yeah. Devin Pearson a little slow to get up, and he'll make his way off the field for Liberty. As it'll be third and seven. Big third down for both sides of the ball. Now you wonder, too, if they're not able to get all seven here, May very well be four down territory. We'll see. Yeah, good point. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. James Madison in the backfield. You're going to get a pressure from Liberty again. 
Could be a five or six man. Geller, back to pass, looking, lofting downfield, looking for Dean. He adjusts to the football, and I'm actually not sure which receiver that was to. Dean reacted at first like it was to him, but it sailed over his head and fell right between he and Mitch Guller, who was to the outside. Yeah, Liberty's showing a great deal of confidence in their defensive backs, man. Both receivers had beaten their man. Yeah, the they ball just through. fell in between them. Yeah, they're showing a great deal of confidence in their defensive backs by bringing those pressure blitzes, putting your guys on an island, playing man-to-man. -man. Both guys had gotten behind them, but ball fell to the turf. So the punt is away. We'll bounce at the 10 and keep on rolling. So they've had a hard time pinning Liberty deep as that one rolls into the end zone, and Liberty will have it at their own 20 when we come back. 12.31 to go, Flames up three. Day for football game here in Central Virginia. Homecoming for Liberty University. And the Flames lead it by three with 12.31 to go in the game. Liberty with the ball starting on their own 20. Buckshot Calvert slings out. Too tall. Is that one? No whistle was blown. Late whistle. Players reacting as though it may have been a lateral. But that one dangerous as it was a little high for DJ Stubbs and kind of led him right into traffic. Yeah, that was close to being a ladder. I'm a little bit surprised the refs didn't let that one play out. The second 10 now. That's Frank Boyd on the handoff, trying to get to the outside, cuts it up, makes another man miss, and spins his way. Now as the ball comes free. Now the question, was he down? The officials, no real indication yet. First down. And they'll say the ball came out after he hit the turf. So a nice run by Frank Boyd, who has really gotten a, a strong look here in the second half and has taken advantage of it. They go right back to him, and he's hit hard as a flag comes in. Frank did a good job on that run, sticking his foot in the ground, making a quick cut. But Liberty's got some good backs. Depth. Illegal shift. On the offense, number one and number 17 were not set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. Liberty was trying to go fast, maybe went a little too fast as they weren't able to get set. So it'll be first and 15. You talk about big series for Idaho State, looking to create that third turnover. I don't know. Buckshot running out of time, just threw it out of bounds. Yeah, trying to throw the wide field screen, but he had a guy right in his face, so he decided to throw it to the cheerleaders. So got rid of the football, had a couple of receivers over there. Brings up now second and 15. Well, once again, those are the little things you have to do right. You have to protect the quarterback. Protect the quarterback, allow him to make the throws. Give to pick it. Nowhere to go. Good job. Hustling to the football, wrapping him up for no gain. It's going to be third and long now. Talk about it. You said huge series of plays right here for this defense for Idaho State. Big moment now for Liberty as well. Third and 15. Mm -hmm. Do you gamble a little bit? Do you try to throw it downfield here? Obviously, the go-to guy has been Antonio Gandy-Golden all afternoon. Yeah, go to him. They're going to play a double over the top on him, I, see, I believe. Bring the safety. Safety work this way. Try to do up. Here he comes. Double over the top. Calvert has time. Steps up. Fires down the middle of the field. The catch is made by DJ Stubbs. Stubbs came open across the middle of the field. And Calvert with an absolute dart right to number five. Those are exactly the things you need to do, Matt, in order to open up your game because they double over the top with the safety to get AGG, which leaves that middle wide open, and DJ Stubbs gets in there on the dig route. Pick it. Wrapped up. 
Picks up maybe one as Idaho State doing a pretty good job here on the last few running plays. There's another look at Stubbs and how he got free. Yeah, good job getting behind the linebacker, finding that soft spot in the zone. Good job by DJ Stubbs and Buckshot delivering it on the money. Pickett still in there running back. They fake it to him. Now throw it to Stubbs in space, and he goes down right near the first down marker. I really think Liberty should be doing what they're doing right now is in attacking the ball, attacking the middle of the field through the passing game. Work on the Bengals linebackers right now. Subs with his seventh catch of the ball game. He's over 100 yards receiving now as the Flames move the chains. They go right back to him. Stubbs shoved to the ground inside the 30-yard line. He is so good in space. Any way you can get him the football, try to get in five's hands and let him go to work. Yeah, no question. Gets five yards right there. I like Liberty's pace right now. Keep it moving. Keep it going. They've got a good thing going. Second and five. Fullback Mitchell Lewis moves to the right now. Buckshot pulls it down, slings it out. Lyle McConnell makes a man miss down the far sideline and is bumped out of bounds at the 15-yard line as Adkin Aguirre came over to keep him from breaking off a big one. There's your philosophy in the horizontal game. When you throw the ball horizontally, you want to get the ball in space and make them tackle. These, these guys are tough to tackle. Liberty moving quickly now. They swing it out the other way to McConnell. Lowers the shoulder, taken down at the nine. So picks up about five on first down, and they're picking up you know, an easy five, yeah. six yards on those passes out to the outside. I like what they're doing. I like what Liberty's doing offensively. They're doing it decisively, and they're doing it with clarity. And when you do those two things, it frees up the players to make their plays. Well, you can't come away with a field goal if you're Liberty, and in this ballgame, the way it's gone here. No. So you're thinking end zone here is still. Big drive as they try to finish it off. Hand off to Pickett. And quickly, he's met there. Maybe a pickup of one. A little bit surprised right there. Idaho State loaded up the box right there. They had, they had nine guys down in there. I thought they were going to get a shot. That buckshot may take a shot to Caleb Coleman up top. So third and five on the Idaho State nine-yard line. Let's see what Idaho State does here. What kind of look they give Liberty defensively. Antonio Gandy-Golden, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. There'll be two on him. I can tell you that much. They've Stubbs already walked the line. Stubbs in the slot to the right. And now it's like we're going to get a timeout. And that's actually, I think, an official's timeout yeah. as they ask one of the cameramen to step back. Get back. And now we're ready to go. And yeah, well, you look, they walked out linebacker on AGG. Man over the top. Stubbs in the slot. Coleman wide right. Play clock at 10. Work to DJ Stubbs. Calvert hands it off. Pickett lowers the shoulder, oh. keeps the feet moving, and falls forward for the first down. Yeah, that's a pick your poison for, for the Bengals. You want to walk that linebacker out to double AGG. Now you have a problem. You've got one less guy in the box, and they'll be able to run the ball right at the middle. Liberty gives it back to Pickett. Fighting, lunging, and he's in. Big drive for the Flames. Another touchdown for Peyton Pickett. His second of the ball game and his eighth of the season. Yeah, ran right, get it right up the middle. Be able to get your shoulders down low. All you're trying to do is have a nose for the end zone. What a big time drive at a big time moment for Liberty to be able to put that together and get, like you said, get seven points instead of three. Extra point from Probert, up and through, and it was a drive that took almost five minutes off the clock. It ended with this run, Peyton Pickett. Only 24 yards today, but he's found Pater twice. Now this is Daddy's favorite song. Alexa, play Dad's playlist. Ooh, la, la. Ooh, la, la, la. You know that feeling when the last strip of grass is exactly the width of your lawnmower?
That's kind of how it felt when we saved hundreds by switching to Geico. Little known fact, Joe Yock does this in the booth after every score. Oh, yeah. You don't get jacked. Yeah. Like Yock was, you know, it's just by accident. It takes work. <laughs> and high scoring game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Liberty scoring that touchdown. Peyton Pickett finishing it off. A drive that took just under five minutes and all day long. Idaho State has had an answer every time their back's yeah. been up against the wall. They need one right here. Still a lot of time left, seven and a half, but you feel like they have to come away with points of some kind on this possession. Yeah, it's been such a crazy game. You feel as if one team's take control, the other team gets it back, and then they give it up, the other team takes control. So I'm interested to see right now, can Idaho State take the momentum away from Liberty, come down, make a score, and let this thing come down to the wire. Garrett to kick it away. Squibs pops up, taken at the 25, and lunging forward to about the 29, and that's where things will start for Idaho State. So big opportunity here for them. Make something happen. Seven and a half to go in this ball game. As Tanner Goler makes his way onto the field and talked a lot about Tanner and Mitch and the brothers and growing up together. No doubt a competitive household. With more on that, Bobby Bowling checking in. Bobby? Yeah, Matt, I'll try to tell it the best I can. Tanner said it the best, so I'll try. But he said that when he was in middle school, uh, Mitch was in high school, they were playing wiffle ball in the front yard. Tanner was pitching, let me say, and Mitch was hitting. In Tanner's words, he threw it right down the middle. Mitch said uh, it was outside. Long story short, strike three calls, ends up in an argument. Well, the next day is Tanner's birthday, so he said he had to go to school with a black eye over a strike three call in a wiffle ball game from the night before. He said that pretty much sums up uh, our childhood. Yeah, you hear about that <laughs> a lot with your own brothers that play at a high level. You know, a lot of fights breaking out, and, you know, parents play referee more than anything else, but you said it just in watching this kid play, Joe, a competitor. He throws a strike there up to midfield. That one hauled in by the tight end, Jake Johnson. And this team is made up of more than just those two kids. They've made up of some tough, gritty competitors. And they're showing it here this afternoon and have about seven minutes left to show what they can do before this one's over. Yeah, that competitive nature really works its way down into the rest of the team from a leadership standpoint. Goller finds his brother, able to get across the 40-yard line. Looks like enough for a first down. They'll move the chains, and quickly, you're seeing Idaho State get something rolling offensively. Yeah, just like we said, can they grab that momentum back, get a score right here, and I think you're going to see that, that brotherly guller to guller when crunch time comes, comes about. You're going to see them really connect. Idaho State approaching 500 yards of total offense. That might do it. Guller to guller again. The seventh time we've been able to say that. And they move the chains one more time. Liberty defense really not putting up much of a fight at all on this drive. I really believe, Matt, that in late in football games, linebackers have been running a lot, trying to stop the run. They can be attacked in the middle of the field in pass coverage. Well, we've seen it the last couple of throws. They're going to throw it again. Guller standing in, now pump faking, now looking to pull it down, see what he can get. Driving forward and gets... Oh, about four or five on first down. Yeah, they're trying to run a little hitch and go there and take a shot at the end zone, but uh, Peters didn't take, the, didn't take the cheese, and so there was no throw. The second and four. Clock ticks under six minutes to go in the ball game. Middle of the field, wide open. Guller running out of time. Hit! Ball comes free! Picked up! by Idaho State. Oh, Jesse Limonier came firing out of his defensive end position and he made Tanner Guller pay. Yeah, Tanner is getting ready to step into a throw right over the middle of the field. Jesse comes in there and lays a, lays a saw lick on him, gets the ball loose and that was close. You can see him, he's getting ready to pull the trigger. Oof. Right as Jesse, great play by Jesse. All right, so the ball on the 29 of Liberty. The wind is at their back. Third and 18. You don't need to get it all necessarily no. to give yourself a chance for a field goal and cut it back to a one possession game. Yeah, I tried to pick up 10 and kick a field goal. Four receivers out. Guller rolling out. Throws a little bit of a duck that sails wide on him. And so they won't get anything. 
on third and 18. And now comes the question as they look to the sideline. Do you bring on your kicker for what would be about a 46-yarder? It doesn't look like they're even giving that a thought at all. Yeah, a little bit surprised. 46 yards with the wind at your back. Third and, eight, third and 18 is a, I mean, sorry, fourth and 18 is a tough conversion. Saw Shido miss one earlier going the other way. And yeah, third and, or fourth and 18. That is an awful lot to ask of even an offense as explosive as this Bengals group. Here we go. Pressure comes. Stepping up in the pocket. Throwing towards the end zone. Battle for the football. Knocked down. Incomplete. And Liberty will get the ball back. Malik Matthews on the coverage as they tried to hit Tanner Connor. And Liberty's defense makes the plays when they need to as they try to wrap up a win here on homecoming. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Add some color to your Black Friday and get a great deal in a Jeep SUV. The best-selling SUV brand. Great deals going on all month at the Jeep Black Friday sales event. With Hulu, tailgating's never been better. Unlike the early days when all you had was a radio. But through the years, the experience got better and better. And now, Hulu's completely changed the game. Because you don't have to choose between tailgating or watching football live on ESPN. You can do both, no cable required. Hulu makes it so easy, the game will never be the same. Liberty leads by 10, thanks in part to that last defensive stand. And what a day for Jesse Lemonnier. Juco transfer, eight total tackles, three sacks, five tackles for a loss. He's got more tackles for a loss today than he had all season, and now up to six sacks on the year for the young man out of Florida. As you know, when he got here, coaches said, you know, this kid's special. Yeah. And he has shown here, especially the last couple of ball games. He had a couple of penalties, bad penalties here. That was a couple of games ago. But made some plays against Troy. And is really two forced fumbles. Has really wreaked havoc from his defensive end position here today. Yeah, the play made on third down was the defensive play of the game. Yeah. You know, the sack quarterback knocked the ball out. That was the that was the standout play of the game. So the Flames now trying to run out the final 440. Hand off up the middle. Picking his way for a few yards there was, was that Frank Boydian? Nope, Frankie Hickson back in the ball game. Yeah, like you said, Matt, they got to run it out. This is what good football teams do. They feel as if when it gets down under five minutes to go and you have the lead, you got to be able to run the football for first downs in order to gain that clock advantage. Liberty content to let that play clock roll. In no hurry at all. Three timeouts still remaining for Idaho State. If they're able to get a stop here short of the first down, you might see him use one. Hand off. Taken down as Hickson. He's going to be about four yards shy, and here comes your timeout. Well, I say that. I heard the whistle. Maybe not. They're just clearing the pile there. So, yeah, clock. So he's going to continue to roll. As you take a look at those second-half drives from the Flames. Scoring touchdowns yeah. on three of their last four possessions. Yeah, interception, interception started the started the second half, but then able to come back and, like you said, get three touchdowns with only two punts. That's a successful drive chart right there. Look at the time of possession on those. Look at the, the, yeah. the yeah, very, very quick striking you know, plays with AGG. Third and four. Buckshot looking to pass. Now under some pressure, rolling to his right, slinging it back towards Andy Golden, and he dropped it. Oh, take that back. Caleb Coleman right there between the one and the seven. And he wasn't able to make the play. And don't head home just yet. Yeah, exactly. You let them hang around. This Idaho State team's explosive offensively. They still have, do they still have all three of their timeouts left? They have all three timeouts left. Uh, don't go home yet. So Aiden Alvis comes in to punt it away. This has been probably his best day as a flame as he has really been punting it well here this afternoon. Gets away another good one. Bearcats called fourth and 19. 
That ball's going to hit. Why he let that thing bounce, I don't know, but it's grabbed by the Flames at the 19-yard line, and that's where the Bengals will take it with 2.53 to go in this ball game. Yeah, interesting to see, Matt. How how do you think Liberty will play this? What do you do? You play a prevent defense right here and give every, everything up underneath. Uh, do you just stay in your base stuff? Do you try to bring pressure to create a turnover? I'd be interested to see how they play it. Well, I wouldn't create pressure. I'll tell yeah. you that. And you've seen them get pressure with Lemonier and Juwan Wells just with that front four here. The last few possessions, they are going to rush four. Good throw, finds Dean for about 16 yards on first down. And now you'll see if this Bengals offense picks up the pace a bit. They have an offensive lineman slow to get up right now. Yeah, big Jawan Wells came on. Big Juan came on a twist right there. And he put pressure on the quarterback and really gave him a shot right as he released the ball. So they have to sub out one of their offensive linemen here. That's going to use up some clock as it ticks down to two and a half minutes to go. Not wanting to use a timeout. Feller looks to throw, steps up, fires one to his brother who makes the play and is across midfield. You know, those are the best plays. You pick up 12, 13 yards, step out of bounds, stop the clock. Those are the plays they need to make to drive this ball down the field and use very little clock while doing it. Clock running again. Feller surveys the field. Here comes Juwan Wells. Guller slings one down the field towards Dean. He makes the grab down inside the 10 and steps out of bounds at the 9. What a throw by Guller. He threw that thing on a rope about 40 yards on the post corner route to Dean. Wow. And he had Jawan Wells bearing down on him. Good job making that grab by Dean. Stepping out of bounds at the 9-yard line and... Not done just yet. Dean now with 153 receiving yards on the day. Guller throwing to the back of the end zone. Nearly picked off. Trying to fit it into his brother. And Bajor Wilson there to break it up. Bajor Wilson cut right underneath that thing. That would have been, that would have been the game-sealing interception. Surprised he didn't make that play. But a good cut under the ball to break that up. Minute 52 to go in the ball game. Tanner Guller trying to lead his team back. Guller with time. Launches again towards his brother. Again well defended. No flags come in despite a protest there by Mitch Guller. And Pedro Wilson doing a nice job on him these last two passes. Yeah, good coverage down in the red zone when it really counts. It's the bend but don't break philosophy. It'd be interesting to see what happens here. If they don't get the touchdown, will they kick the field goal? I think you almost have to, don't you? Give yourself a chance. Third and nine, and we're going to get a timeout. Timeout, Liberty, their first 30-second timeout. So the Flames want to make sure their defense is on the same page. They have given up 570 yards of offense, so now's a good time to just make yeah. sure everybody knows their responsibilities. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how you think. I agree with you, Matt. I think you're right from a strategy standpoint that if they don't score the touchdown here on third down, you kick the field goal. You have three timeouts remaining. However, there's only, what, a minute 40? 46. A minute 46 left in the game. So that puts you in a position where you're most likely going to have to kick on sides. And then if you get the recovery, hey, you got a chance to go down and yeah, tie the ball Yeah, I think that's the game. best way. And, and you're right. Because of those timeouts, you kind of give yourself two chances if you onside it. Right. You know, a chance to recover the onside. If you don't, you Still hope you can get every three timeouts. Yeah. You can yeah. stop the clock yeah. try to get it back. But, yeah, you don't have to uh, go for it on fourth down here. And, again, wind at your back at this point as well, which would help the kicker, Campbell Shido. Third down and nine. Third down and goal from the nine, rather. Guller to the end zone. Bodies hit the deck. Flag. No. The official there along the back line was reaching. He reached. Trying to pull it he out. Reached. And then he thought differently. Yeah. That's like a home plate umpire flinching on a yeah. ball on the corner. You yeah. see him reaching for that oh. flag. You expect him to throw it. Yeah, I saw him go to the turf right Watch here. Watch him right here at the back of the end zone. Oh, he's kind of couldn't quite see. Kind of shielded off there by the goalpost. Yeah. But, here we go. Honestly, man, I think that ball may have been tipped at the line ah, of scrimmage. That could be. That could be the reason. Then. 
Campbell Shido in now. Must have this field goal to have a chance. Kick is up and through. So Shido does his part. Minute 37 to go. One possession ball game as they get a look at that last play. Let's see if it's tipped. Yeah. There's yeah, a, I think you're right. Look at the spin of that football. I think yeah, you're right. If we could see it from behind, that gives us a better look. But, a, but there's a big paw. I saw yeah. one of those big paws. One of those big, as my dad liked to say, one of those big meat hooks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of those big meat yeah. hooks came up there. And, Here we go. Let's see if we can see yeah, right, right here. here. That Tolan yeah. Avery, I yeah. think maybe they got the hand up there. Yep. That ball was clearly tipped. So that isn't, even if it was pass interference, yeah. it's not pass interference due to the tip. So minute 37 to go, and now you get down to the, what we were talking about. Does Idaho State elect to onside kick it? 137, three timeouts. Do you try to pin them in deep? They have not attempted an onside kick yet this season. I think you do it. I understand if you don't get it, Liberty is in you know, good field position, but they are going into the wind. Yeah. And it just gives you two opportunities. Right. As opposed to just the one if you kick it deep and then you right. have to rely on getting the stops. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. Yep. So Liberty with the hands team on. Gandy Golden right there along the front lines. As here it comes. Ball still rolling around. Still loose. Who got it? Liberty. And Liberty recovered. Oh, what an opportunity. Ooh. It was there for the taking. And Idaho State not able to get on it. Javon Scruggs, the gift from Appomattox, falls on it. Take another look at this. It sneaks through right there. Right at right Dean's feet. Right between the legs. That looked like that was Andy Whittier. Okay. Defensive back for Idaho State went right there between oh. his legs. He said they had a great shot at that. That close. That's when they say it's a game inches. It yeah. is a game inches right there. But still all three timeouts, so Idaho State can get the ball back if they can stop these three runs. Flames hand it off. Hickson breaks free, has some room to run. Hickson still loose, 20, 10, 5, lunging for the end zone. Touchdown, Flames. That's how you seal a ball game. <laughs> seal the deal. What a day for Frankie Hickson, his third touchdown run of the day. Now 133 yards on the ground as he broke that first tackle, got free of the second, and goes 47 yards to the house. Yeah, Frankie showed good patience on that round, bounced it, then was able to see the crease, break through, use his speed. And then what I like most is the finishing of the run at the very end to seal the deal, like you said, Matt. Probert coming on now for the extra point. As Liberty trying to put this one away. It hasn't been easy, but in front of this homecoming crowd, as that one doinks off the upright and through, maybe that's a good microcosm of the day. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't been pretty, but in the end, it looks like they'll get the job done. There's been a lot of doinking off the upright and good. A lot of doinking going on today, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> What a day, though, for Frankie Hickson. A guy that took a big shot, yeah. remember, early in this ball game, was shaken up. We weren't sure what his status would be the rest of the day. And he has come back with a vengeance, having one of his better days in a Flames uniform. You always like a running back that has the attitude of, and you can tell Frankie Hickson has this, the attitude of, you know, I'm going to take the fight to you. And being aggressive. And, you know, the end of a game, instead of just looking for two to three yards, Frankie was looking like, hey, I want to I want to end this thing, and I'm going to end it right now. So I really like that attitude by Frankie. Yeah, reason for him to be dancing on the sideline. He's feeling good right now. A kid that's waited his turn in the last couple of years. Kind of sporadic opportunities this year. He's kind of the third running back, really, early in the season. But Kentori Matthews goes down with an injury. Hickson gets a great opportunity, and he has really made the most of it. Yeah, no question. Liberty's stable of running backs. Like I said, ever since Kentori Matthews went down, 
you know, Frankie Hickson and the whole crew has really stepped up. The Flames squib one. It'll be taken down around the 15. A little bit of room to run across the 35 up to about the 38 here in Yancey. Flames really kicked away from him today. He's a pretty dangerous return man. Flames have done a nice job keeping it out of his hands. Flames do need to clean up their kickoff coverage team. They've struggled with that in the last few games. That can bite you, especially you start getting into this next stretch of the schedule that they're getting ready to run into. I think it's safe to say this off week's going to come for a good time, yeah. or come at a good time for Liberty before they hit that tough stretch of games here in the back half of the schedule at UMass, at Virginia, at Auburn. Their next three games is big. Jawan Wells getting there. Credit Goler. He's not going down. He's carrying about three flames with him. Goler fighting until the clock hits all zeros, and you can certainly appreciate that. Yeah, I see why there's a lot of black eyes in that family. <laughs> timeout. Idaho State, their first 30 second timeout. Goler's probably going to look back on this game and feel like he could have done more. And he's, he's had a tough day throwing it, just 17 of 39. The yardage is there, 331, but a couple of interceptions as well. He's been battling out there. A couple of missed throws down the field he'll probably think back on. But listen, this guy, more touchdown passes, yeah. you know, than anybody that's ever played the game there. He's a kid that has a lot of toughness, a lot of heart. And uh, this team is going to be just fine as they move forward uh, throughout the season. In fact, their next ball game next week, they're at home against Montana State. So they'll try to get back on track as they have four games remaining on the schedule after today. This is a really good football it team. It is. Duller, more pressure coming, and they get there. Austin Lewis gets him to the ground as a flag comes in. And that defensive line now starting to take over. Holding, offense, number 77. Penalty is declined. Third down. You know, it's amazing what happens when the threat of the rush is over. When yeah. The threat of the you're rush exactly is right. over, and you don't, and you can know they're going to throw the ball, and you can just pin your ears back and let it go. Uh, your pass protection has a tendency to break down. Guller tries to set up a screen there to Dean as he sneaks through. Look out. Dean with some room to run, still on his feet. Cross the 30 and out of bounds around the 25. Well, they're not done just yet. Dean has had himself a career day as he's closing in on 200 yards receiving. Dean is shifty. 196 now Man, for Michael Dean on five night. receptions. Five for 196? That's not a bad day at the office. And he is shifty. Duller looking downfield, throwing it, caught. And that's Dean again who makes the grab and gets out of bounds. So he's over 200 yards receiving now. The Bengals are over 600 yards of total offense Ooh. as they just continue to pile it on. Yeah, Dean is like uh, played with a guy in the CFL. His nickname was Pinball. Yeah. That's what he like, a little pinball little out there. Yeah. So 42 seconds to go. Idaho State. Trying to make this thing a little more interesting. He throws one towards the back corner, and it falls incomplete. Good coverage by Jeremy Peters as he was trying to hit Tanner Connor. Yeah, that's a lot of offense the Bengals have put up today. That has not been the problem whatsoever. They, no. have, they have 622 yards, total yards, lots of points, have made all kinds of plays. And if you are able to punch it in here quickly, you still give yourself sure a do. chance. Guller looking, still looking, under pressure, tries to roll out, gets free, now throws it back in the end zone, through the hands of Dean. He had him. He, he had him. He stretched every bit of that five foot six, trying to haul that one in. Just a little too tall. Ah, Dean was trying to climb the ladder right there to get this ball. Like I said, just a little bit too tall for him. But he had him in the back of the end zone. Yeah, that's tough. So third down now. Obviously, 
four down situation for this team right now. As we get another timeout, timeout. from Liberty. Liberty, their second, 30 second timeout. He's not done, old Guller. He'll go over the sidelines, come over play, figure out a way to try to score a touchdown, get a quick onside kick. This, this, I'm impressed with traveling this far as an Idaho State football team, the way that they have stepped up and competed in this game. They've, they've always felt as if they had a chance to win the game. Yeah, they, they've certainly played like they believe they would and still have an opportunity here in the late stages. And an interesting note just pointed out by our spotter here, Lewis Thomas, is that you take a look at the targets. Mitch Guller's been targeted 20 times in this ball game. Dean has been targeted 11 times. That's 31 out of the 43 throws. He's yeah. locking in on those guys. Yeah, so those if you're Liberty, guys. you need to be, yeah. you should by now anyway, yeah. as if you didn't, you didn't really need that stat to, <laughs> to know. But you got to really lock in on those two because that's where Tanner Guller's looking. And we got them both up top there. Guller holds, fires towards the end zone, has his brother. Did he hold on? Yes. Touchdown, Bengals. Tanner Guller finds his brother, Mitch. And they're still breathing. This one's close. I'm not sold that this is a touchdown yet, Matt. Let's take a look at this replay. It was along the back line there. And did he get the foot down? And did he have possession as he went out of bounds? Yeah. Yep. Looks I like he got he both down. Tapped it. Tapper. That'd yes. be good on Sundays. Woo, that is good on Sundays. Here comes the extra point to make it a seven-point ball game with 24 seconds to go. Not over just yet. Shido boots it through. Tell you what, the Guller, the Guller family didn't just give each other black eyes. It looks off of that play they took ballet lessons too <laughs> because that was a yeah, toe tapper. Was. Yeah, nice it's, a, it's a well-rounded family. That's right. Well, we came in saying, boy, this could be a shootout. How many times do you come into ball games and say, boy, this looks like it's going to be a shootout, and it's a 21-17 yeah, game? Yeah. No, it's been exactly what we thought today. Both offenses just moving up and down the field at will. And uh, here we are, 24 seconds left. It's still not quite decided. Yet at the same time, you also, this is, once again, we go back from a Liberty's perspective, back to that head-scratching moment. And that is a, 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 Troy, a Troy team who comes in here with five wins in a row, yeah. win over Nebraska yeah. on the road. You know, had, had beaten LSU in the past. Yeah. And Liberty's defense plays the game of their life, stuffs them. They score less than 20 points. And you're thinking, okay, now they're back on track. And yeah. Idaho State comes in here and, and puts on a, a, a ninth grade biology dissection going <laughs> on right now. Uh, yeah, they have. All right, here we go. Second onside opportunity. Kevin Ryan to kick it. That one takes a bounce and grabbed by DJ Stubbs. Good hands by Stubbs. That may have been the catch of the day for DJ. There you go. Now it's a wrap. Now the Flames can breathe a little easier. What a day. With the clock operator, please set the clock at 22 seconds. 22. It has not been easy whatsoever. The Flames certainly have a lot of things to uh, focus on as they head into their bye week. But in the end, what the coaches always say? You don't apologize for a win. Yes, sir. W is a W. They're not easy to come by, and the Flames are going to get one here on homecoming. Well, if anything, they gave these 16,000 or so fans an exciting oh, yeah. afternoon of football. And with this victory, Liberty not only gets the win here today, not only moves to four and three on the season, which is a very good mark, certainly in their first season of FBS football, they also get the 250th win in program history. So a few milestones taking place here today, being reached here today by the Flames as Turner Gill and his team celebrate a uh, exciting 48-41 win over Idaho State. Wasn't easy, Joe. No. I'm tired. You're, you're worn out. Whew. About time to go take a nap. 
Probably some of these players feel the same way. Hey, don't forget, catch our Facebook Live post-game show on the Liberty Athletics Facebook page. You can hear the entire Turner Gill press conference there, as well as highlights and analysis from our guys at the desk. So check that out. For Joe Yock, I'm Matt Warner, saying so long from Lynchburg, Virginia, where the final score is Liberty 48, Idaho State 41. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Have a great afternoon, everybody.